It's hard to put into words the significance of an event like we just saw. The opening ceremony for a team that is hosting the largest event in the marble world, the Marble League. It's the Green Ducks who welcome this colorful, passionate universe into their humble abode, in this case, the pond, for what was a opening ceremony for the ages. I was honored to be a part of it. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods, seated here inside of this wonderful stadium. I swear that duck is looking at me. We keep making eye contact. Well, what we are about to see over the course of this Marble League, multiple events that will set one Marble team on the path towards sporting immortality. The prize that they all seek is that trophy and Marble League glory. Gold medals, podium positions in general, and for others, those who just wish to make a good showing, to show improvement, and all of their hard work was worth something. To kick things off, we have what for some marbles is going to be a literal kick. Down they come. That is the example run of climbing. You may have seen it if you were with us for the qualifiers. You have the striker and the skipper. The skipper is launched up that climbing wall, and the farthest total will be recorded. For the strikers, they have to time their impact just right, conserve their momentum until the absolute perfect moment, and see what they can contribute. And it's Skipper, the mascot for this Marble League, that will start the first heat here in 2022. Green Ducks, Chocolatier, Shining Swarm, and the Minty Maniacs. And we get our first look at those marbles that will be chasing that record that was set in the qualifiers. 66.1 for the Chocolatier, 63.9, 59.4, and 59.2. It's the best of two runs for these teams. That mark to beat 77.6 set by Team Primary in their second run. And that might get the Chocolatiers near 70 by the looks of it. 
We wait for the official timing and scoring, 69.5, just shy. There was some improvement among the other teams. So Chalk, the captain of the Chocolatiers, and Coco get the win in Heat 1, 69.5. Mellow Yellow, Savage Speeders, Midnight Wisps, and Balls of Chaos come down now. And Mellow Yellow will have the lead through Heat number 1. As we take a look at the moment of impact, always interesting to see what those marbles do, especially the strikers, where they end up. Now for the skipper, 71. That would be farthest of all so far. They change lanes. Back up at the top, Savage Speeders, Mellow Yellow, Balls of Chaos, the Midnight Wisps from far to near. Ooh, and that is a good run on lane three. 74 for the Balls of Chaos. Disarray and Snarl move to the top spot. That would have been good enough for third in either of the qualifiers, Group A or Group B. Balls of Chaos finished third back then with Disarray and Snarl, that same lineup. Their best mark was 72. That was good enough for third. Dead last so far for our hosts. Let's hope for the sake of the home fans that this is not an omen of things to come. 59.4, disappointing for Billy and Quacky. Of course, they did not have to compete in the qualifiers. They did come through in the friendly round. But you have to wonder if maybe that lack of competition led them to underprepare. Well, things are looking up for that duck. Let's see if it does for the rest of this Marble League season. Look at all the fans, by the way, that we have. Love to see the signs, love to hear the chants. The atmosphere in this place is something to behold. The Rangers, Team Galactic, Gliding Glaciers, and Team Primary out there now. And this is very close. I think Team Primary may have edged forward, but it wasn't by much. 71.2 to 70.6. It was close. Change positions now. Team Galactic, Avengers, Primary, and Glaciers. Hard to tell from that camera angle. I think Team Galactic up in that top lane may have gotten the best run, 74.1. Quasar and Pulsar. Watch a 74.1 solid. Oh, Ranger 72 is nothing to shake a stick at either. Raspberry Racers, Crazy Cat's Eyes, Pinkies, oh, and it's going to be the bottom lane, the Bumblebees. I think it will go ahead in this one. It will be 73, Honey and Hive. This is a team that, in that same lineup, managed a 74.6 to place second in Group B of the qualifiers. Team Galactic, by the way. They got first in Group B, 75-5. This time, Crazy Cat Size. I think Bumblebees also made a lunge there. Good contact between the striker and the skipper. It's even 73 apiece. Well, that is the epitome of consistency, doing it two heats in a row, but then to have in the second heat somebody else do it, what are the odds? That is crazy. Well, I'm not sure how tiny it's going to shake that out. Uh, they, they have the same result. Bumblebee's second best run is higher, thus they will get the bronze, and Crazy Cat Size get the fourth place. Oh my goodness. So you go from a tie at the first run, they look to the next best run, and that is what determined the podium order. And we have our first medalists of 2022, Team Galactic. They've won it in the qualifiers. They've won it in the main event. Congratulations also to Balls of Chaos. They went one spot up from third place in Group A to second place in event number one. Bumblebees go from second in Group B to third and a bronze here in the first event 
of the Marble League. We hope to see you for the rest. After a dynamic start to the 2022 Marble League, we move further inward into the duckweed, where we welcome you for balancing. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. This is a sport that first appeared back in the 2016 Marble League. It was won back then by the Rojo Rollers, and we've seen it appear many times in many different variants. The most recent was in the qualifiers, where we had the Orangers and the Pinkies come out on top. The Pinkies did so in a phenomenal 420 point showing, but even that pales in comparison to the all-time record set by the Hazers back in 2019 when they went 438 combined centimeters. The most podiums in this event go to the Raspberry Racers. They have three of them over the course of history, which means that they have mastered this art of a team sport that also requires a great deal of thought. We see the example run here where the marbles are released. They come down as a team and they can't get in each other's way too much. They fall off and the corresponding point total gets added to their overall. If you make it down to that green catch basin, you get 130 points and you feel a little bit more accomplished with yourself than those who fell off early. Well, regardless of accomplishment, listen to the cheers for the hosts, the Green Ducks, in the gate and ready to kick things off for event number two. Down they come, they lose too early. One's gonna hold on and make it all the way down for a 130 point total. Add up the other three, that gives them 302. That is the leading mark to beat. We saw in the qualifiers that if you're above 300, you're in good air. May not necessarily lead to a win, especially when you see sometimes two finishers or more. Mellow Yellow come out now. They were runners up back in that inaugural event back in 2016. They try to hold on. Oh, it goes right over the wall. Yella overshoots it and will get 120. That same thing happened with Jungle Jumpers. If you weren't with us for the qualifiers, rode that side rail and gets 120 instead of 130. And there you have the updated point total. Still 302 is the leader. Raspberry Racers. Accomplished as they are. Oh, and this will be one to forget. They do get past 105 for a 247 in total, but losing to it, 39 and 44 is less than ideal. Gliding Glaciers slide down now. They've got two right in the center rail. One's gonna make it, and the other one falls off just shy. 349 is the new tentative P1. Keeping cool under pressure is something the gliding glaciers do well, I guess by definition. Chocolatiers coming out now. Long holding the gate. They bunch up early and that spells disaster. Look at them already to the left side of the line by the time they exit the ramp. And that is a paltry 190. 13 primary, we're not watching that up ahead of them. As they come down now, the winners at this event back in the showdown in 2019, and they're not going to win it here. 264. Midnight Wisps come through. Runners up in the qualifiers in Group B. They have one riding down center that will finish, but those two that fell right before 70 will depress their total down to 290. They sit in third. So it is still the Gliding Glaciers leading the way 349 and then quite a gap back to the Green Ducks 302. Pinkies will descend. Keep two right in the middle. One of them comes very close. Will that be registered a 120? Oh, it's a 119 in addition to the 130. That's 369 and the Pinkies picking up right where they left off in the qualifiers with a fantastic total to vault themselves into gold medal contention. We take a look at the standings thus far. Midway through, Chocolatier's dead last with 190, 369, 20 clear 
of the Gliding Glaciers are the Pinkies. So far, our top four all had a finisher. Who will be the first to crack two? Will we see two? Will we see three? It remains to be seen, and I can tell you that's an optimistic look on that duck's face. Maybe not for the green ducks, but for somebody else. Could it be the Shining Swarm who were runners up in Group A in the qualifiers at this event? They've got two, though, they bump into each other. It was going fairly well up until this point. You can see them heading off to the side. They just could not redirect. The Rangers, winners in Group A. Not great, sixth place, 279. Not the start that the Rangers had hoped for. Savage Speeders. They were third back in the qualifiers in this event in 2020, and they get one to the finish. They had two riding on there fairly well at the end. 347 gives them third place. That is two behind the Gliding Glaciers, who sit in second. Fortunately for the hosts, that means Green Ducks are off the podium. Coming down into the final few, the Bumblebees will have two finishers. They lost two early on. What will the math shake out to be? 312. So, oh my goodness, those early losses took what could have been a gold medal winning performance and knocked it down, not even on the podium. Crazy Cat's Eyes in the gate. Chasing that top mark of 369. And they just saw two finishers ahead of them. They can only replicate one, however. But it's good enough for second place. That's a tremendous total. Look at that tracking by Yellow Eye to make it into the basin at the end, 356 slides in front of the Gliding Glaciers 349. It's balls of chaos now. Oh, they lose two very early, even with a finisher. This total will not be what they had hoped for. 215, 13th out of 14 runners. That was chaotic for all the wrong reasons. Team Galactic. Winners in the friendly round back in 2020 in this event. They keep two riding well and two to the finish. 393. And just like that, Team Galactic is guaranteed no worse than a silver. So the Pinkies are also guaranteed a medal. What can the Minty Maniacs do? Winners in the Hubelino tournament in this event back in 2018. They bump each other, send one into the catch basin, but that will not be enough to unseat Team Galactic. Tenth place even with a finisher. That is disappointing for the Minty Maniacs, but we have our second podium of the Marble League, and so far both of them have seen Team Galactic standing at the top. Team Galactic repeats from the friendly round two years ago. They win with a total of 393 in front of the Pinkies 369 and Crazy Cat's Eyes 356 for bronze. Well done to our podium finishers, Team Galactic. Looking strong right now. Winners of the first two events. And that gives them a wide margin. Ahead of second place Crazy Cat's Eyes and third place Pinkies who are just one point ahead of the Bumblebees. Team Galactic has come to play. Will it continue or will somebody unseat them? Stay tuned to find out. As event three bounds along in the 2022 Marble League, who will be left jumping for joy at the end of the five meter hurdles? Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Welcome back to the home of the Green Ducks in this wonderful packed stadium suspended above the duck moss. As we see, the Green Ducks not doing so great. It's early days though. Don't worry, they did score nine points in the second event. I tell you who is doing well, however, it's Team Galactic. It had been a few years since we'd seen them on the top step of the podium here. 
and they have done it two straight times. Will they be able to master what you are witnessing right now? Well, that remains to be seen. The five meter hurdles, one of persistence, of perfection in form, but also in stamina. You see there are referees at each one of the hurdles and then down there at the finish line because this is not for the faint of heart. If you make one misstep early on in this course, you will pay for it. And this event goes quickly. So there's very little time to react and try to get the ship righted. As we pan our way up this course, we'll take a look at the starting gate where these marbles will be making their way, some of whom may be competing for the very first time in this event. Looking at that marvelous duck and the trophy in front. I'm sure that duck is wondering who will come out on top. Will it be Mallard, the captain of the Green Ducks? Wisps, speeders, balls of chaos will really slow out of the gate and continue to fall behind. It is the Green Ducks on the bottom lane. The crowd's going crazy. Look at this lead and look at this win in the heat. Mallard brings it home, and yet that stoic duck does not appear phased, almost like that duck expected it to happen. 9.021 is a pretty good time for the Green Ducks, and the crowd is just going nuts, of course. It is the very first heat of four. Raspberry Racers, Pinkies, Shining Storm, Crazy Cat's Eyes. Raspberry Racers with a good launch out of the gate, but here come the Crazy Cat's Eyes on the bottom. They're all navigating it well, but look at on the inside, Pinkies across the line, narrowly ahead of the Raspberry Racers. What is the time? 9.260. Pinky Panther gets by by two hundredths of a second. The Pinkies are trending well in this event. They finished runner-up, in fact, in the qualifiers. They're not placed in the top three in any of the previous iterations of this event going back to the 2016 Marble League. Their best finish was eighth back in 2017. With Team Primary, Gliding Glaciers, Team Galactic, and the Bumblebees. Gliding Glaciers out in front. Down to the bottom, though. Bumblebees and Galactic. Oh, it's going to be close. Three across the line. Who got it? The Bumblebees made a showing of it, and they held on to second place. Gliding Glaciers took the win, 9.5. That's a fairly slow time, however. This crowd building for the fourth of four heats. Chocolatiers, Mellow Yellow, O'Rangers, and the Minty Maniacs. Mellow Yellow, slightly better start out of the gate, but not over the first couple of hurdles. O'Rangers come to the lead. Will they be challenged? It doesn't look like it. O'Rangers will cruise to the win. And what was the time? 9.326. Nobody has gone faster than the Green Ducks. The Rangers are buzzing. They did enough in that heat. As we take a look at the semifinal, the Bumblebees, O'Rangers, Savage Speeders, and the Pinkies. You can see how many Green Ducks fans are in there. Those are our bottom eight. They will go no further. And we will not have a three-peat of gold medals from Team Galactic. Sorry, finished down there in 10th and disappointing for Balls of Chaos and Team Primer. Look at how close it was to the Midnight Wisps, too. Shiny Swarm in the meantime, they just miss out. Everybody above them still in play for gold, however. Panning across the pond, there's a lot at stake here. Bumblebees, the Rangers, Savage Speed is in the pink. Very even start. Oh, but a terrible first hurdle for the Savage Speeders. Pinkies on the bottom lane have the lead, but watch up top. Will that be able to close? No. Pinkies hold on. They will advance. Bumblebees also move on with Swax, the reserve. Speedy, the captain, saw that race come undone in the first hurdle, but still only missed out by 87 thousandths. Crowd reacts. Green Ducks, Raspberry Racers, Chocolatiers, Gliding Glaciers. Green Ducks are shot out of a cannon, but can they hold on? Raspberry Racers holding on to second place. Gliding Glaciers are getting by. Across the line, the Green Ducks have advanced. They are off into the final. Gliding Glaciers come through second, but another fine result, even though the time is slower, didn't need to stretch it beyond that. I think the Green Ducks are learning 
Hold it on back. He needs something left in the tank. For a shot at gold. Bumblebees, green ducks, pinkies, and gliding glaciers. Who will win the five meter hurdles? Pinkies, pinkies are off well. Green Ducks try to come back, they're into second place. Green Ducks across the line, they can't get it done. They will take silver, but the Pinkies have taken gold, their first since 2019. There will be no free peats for Team Galactic, but there will be a medal for the hosts, for a crowd that has been waiting three events for it in the Green Ducks, but the Pinkies, congratulations to them just their second gold medal ever in the Marble League. Maybe the dark horse in this one, we've been watching, it was not a super fast time, 9.761. We put the Green Ducks gliding glaciers, who were very consistent over the course of their runs. They net a bronze out of it. Bumblebees back and forth. They got off to a decent start, but could not bring it home. Our hosts trying to vanquish the host curse. They do move up. They were well down in the order. Now they're in the top half. Team Galactic still holding on, though. Five clear of the Pinkies. Bumblebees in third place in front of the Riding Glaciers by just three. Still really early on as we get ready for the water race. And we'll see you next time. It wouldn't be an event hosted by the Green Ducks if we did not, at some point, find our way to water. Hello everyone, I'm Greg Woods. This is the Water Race, the fourth event of the 2022 Marble League in this fantastic setting that we have beautiful conditions and the competition is heating up as well. The Green Ducks are no longer in the bottom half of the order. Team Galactic still holding on to the top spot, but only just the Pinkies and Bumblebees are closing in and it's still in a sense moving day and that moving day is probably going to last several events as it is you know what's also moving the water this fascinating trench that we are seeing and those fans are awfully close to what is a very powerful moving stream of water that of course the finish line but the question is what will it look like to get there well here is the opening straightaway coming off of the gate this is a complex water feature. You see the different riffles and the eddies that exist. Question is, how will these competitors work their way through it? What is the fastest way down it? And that is a great illustration right there of just how fast this water is moving and how dangerous it could be along with the elevation changes. You do see some potential traps that are set out there, make one wrong move or get kicked in one wrong direction and you could end up out of the water. That's not the place to be. Look at it shaking the starting gate. The marbles are up there. They're a little bit nervous. And down they come. The O'Rangers out to an early lead in this one. But look at how interestingly the marbles have to move through this water. In some parts, they get caught in a bit of a whirlwind, and then off they go, kicked forward. As we see some great movement up front and how much of that is purposeful versus not oh mandarin tried to make the move blue eye shuts that one down but they still stay very close good move back there i think that's the pinkies perhaps moving up into third spot just off camera here mandarin trying to hold on down the straightaway comes across the line and gets it in front of crazy cat's eyes it looks like the top four will be moving on the green ducks will not however they come just shy of the transfer spot. Oh, that close. One length apart was all that it took. This race very quick, but look at the amount of time that these marbles spend underwater. Every once in a while they will peek up and uh, get a breath and maybe wish that they could be sitting there enjoying a fine drink alongside, but not so much. Two captains in this one, Cosmo from Team Galactic and Yellow from Mellow Yellow. Down they come, they drop on in. Oh, and a bit of a stoppage there, but they keep going. That was very close. I can't imagine that anybody will get stuck in the actual channel itself, given how fast this water is moving. They're taking a look a little higher up. There's the gliding glaciers. Midnight Wisps are also fighting back there with the Savage Speeders who get by, I believe, into second spot, unless somebody's up in front, and it doesn't appear so. 
They come through that first drop. Savage Speeders trying to hold on. These top four are the transfer positions. Mellow Yellow comes up there as we look at the next drop. Who the rest of them come? This is a battle for midfield that is very close. And across they come. Oh, Waspy just gets it by 17 hundredths over Velocity, who dropped back mightily. Wow, Waspy got that final ticket to the final. I, I hear they had actually hired a technical director in the offseason, did the Midnight Wisps, and it appears to be paying off. We take a look at the finishing order once again. All oh, the Savage Speeders are going to be bitterly disappointed. Oh, hey. That waterfall takes us back to 2016. They used it back then, but uh, apparently the officials working with the committee and with the runners decided not to use it out of safety concerns given the fast water flow this year. Look at Team Galactic. They are in the lead in the Marble League through these first three events, but get a goose egg in event number four. Not what they had hoped for, but it opens the door for some of these other teams to jump up there. We've seen two semifinals. Top four from each. Move on to this final event. Look at the crowds out here. A beautiful day, wonderful conditions. I think any duck would be happy to paddle around here or wander over into that grass. All right. Ready in the gate. Down they come and off we go. It is the O'Rangers who get out to the early lead. Falling back, oh, it looks like dead last back there was Blue Eye from Crazy Cat Size. Team Primary, right up there with the O'Rangers as they come around the left-hander, still deep under the waters. That Pinky's back in third, I believe, but these top two are stretching it a fair distance. About 10 lengths between them right now as Mandarin from O'Rangers holds on. Another couple of drops yet to go. Pinky's also closing up for the silver medal, for the uh, bronze medal position. Down this drop. Oh, and here comes a big move. Team Primary right up against them. They block each other. Contact and across the line. And the O'Rangers hold on by four hundredths of a second to beat Team Primary to goal. What happened here? Oh, man, they all bumped into each other. Nearly came to a stop. That left the top two streak off into the distance. And it was Pinkies and Gliding Glaciers back there. And is this that final move? Look at the burst of speed on them. They just got caught up at the perfect time. Mandarin actually leaping out of the water, hitting so hard on the bottom, and manages to fend off Rima. And the O'Rangers capture the gold, primary silver and pinkies with the bronze. And talk about the paradigm of consistency. The pinkies, three medals in a row through four events. Trending upward. The question is, when do you want to keep? Don't want to do it too early, or are they laying down their stamp of authority, making sure that nobody can catch them after that? Well, congratulations to the O-Rangers, Team Primary, and the Pinkies, our medalists in event number four of the 2022 Marble League, the Water Race. And as we take a look at the standings, Team Galactic have been dethroned. The Pinkies have done enough to leapfrog them by 10 points up in front. My goodness, their technical director must be doing something right. And by the way, if you're also willing to be a part of the team technical director, or even the team manager, follow the Patreon of Yellow's Marble Runs and choose that membership. You can get involved and be a part of your team's glory. One of the most dynamic events in all of the Marble League is always the five meter relay, where teams combine to get those handoffs just right and try to descend this course as quickly as possible as a team. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Well, we've already seen some fantastic performances so far in this Marble League. The Pinkies recently jumped to the top of the standings in front of Team Galactic, clear by 10 points now, with the Rangers close behind winning the previous event. But all eyes now onto this ramp that is the five meter relay as we take a look at what will be an example run. So much to get right and so many pitfalls for what seems to be deceptively simple. You descend down the course, you push your teammate for the next stretch, but the games within the games will always prevail when it comes to something like this. And how fun is this one? So close, every handoff it changes. Look at that battle 
On those bottom three lanes, that's what we could be in store to see for the entirety of this event. Question is, who will come out on top? Who will stand on the podium? Well, I can tell you the Savage Speeders have done it more times than anybody, six times in the history of this event. The unofficial record, 7.918 seconds delivered by the Old Rangers back in 2020. This event held more than a dozen times in different iterations, but here in the Marble League, we have the Green Ducks, the Bumblebees, Pinkies, and Minty Maniacs to kick things off. It's Green Ducks entering the first handoff, but the Minty Maniacs are swinging back. You can see, riding down the centers of those lanes can make a huge difference. And it is the Minty Maniacs coming in in front of the Bumblebees by a tenth of a second. You know, that handoff can be thrown off if you don't enter it exactly in the middle. That is partially why you see some going better than others. The anchor leg, ever important, delivered by the Minty Maniacs in that one. Savage Speeders, Mellow Yellow, Team Galactic, and Team Primary. Very close coming off of the first handoff. Team Galactic out into the lead. Savage Speeders on the far side. Watching the bottom lane, Savage Speeders will get the win and advance. 8.338. Half of a tenth in front of Team Primary. Midnight Wisps, Crazy Cat's Eyes, O'Rangers, and the Gliding Glaciers. Gliding Glaciers have the lead. That battle for second swings to the battle for first. O'Rangers had it briefly. It's a dead heat across the line with the Crazy Cat's Eyes and the O'Rangers. Who has it? Oh, that is very close. And it is crazy cat size by a thousandth of a second. Everybody in that entire heat separated by a tenth. Raspberry Racers, Balls of Chaos, Chocolate Tears, and the Shining Swarm. Down in that bottom lane, this is not going to be contested at all. A simple victory coming through here for the Shining Swarm. Chocolatiers get second. Raspberry Racers beat the Balls of Chaos across in fourth. Already some mixed results for some rather heavy hitters thus far. How will the rest of it shake out? You can see the jubilance on the face of the fans of Savage Speeders. They've won this event four times. Will they be able to three-peat? And this is done now by time, as you see Mellow Yellow and everybody below is locked in. We move to the top eight. Team Galactic. Their fans look on next to the crazy cat size, sandwiched between the cats and the minty maniacs. Hey, there's the wolf pack up there. We'll be talking about them and the purple rockets in the showdown as we get a little bit farther into this one. For semifinal A, it is Chocolatiers, Team Primary. Minty Maniacs and Crazy Cat Eyes. Down they come. Crazy Cat Eyes lead to the first handoff, but I believe have fallen back. Minty Maniacs again out in front. How will the anchor leg hold? Oh, they're nearly pipped. I think they were beaten on the bottom by the Crazy Cat Eyes. They were indeed by eight thousandths of a second. A wonderful Final two handoffs to give the Crazy Cat's Eyes the victory and passage into the final. For the other half, Bumblebees, Savage Speeders, Shining Swarm, and the O'Rangers. Off they go. Bumblebees out in front. Savage Speeders closing right up beside him, and they'll take the win. Savage Speeders get by and continue their fine form in the five-meter relay. 3 thousands of a second over the Bumblebees. We have seen some razor thin margins in this event. The Rangers team primary, Shining Swarm and the Chocolatiers round out fifth through eighth. And that means that of the top five teams in the Marble League right now, only one of them has made it to the final. That is the Bumblebees. And a decent points haul for the O'Rangers with a couple of those top five landing well down in 9th through 16th. Question is now, who will capture gold? Last time this was run in the 2021 Marble League, the Speeders won it. 
It's Cat's Eyes, Minty Maniacs, Savage Speeders, and the Bumblebees. Off they go. Bumblebees get out of the gate well. They lose it through the first handoff. Savage Speeders in the middle lane. Try to stretch that lead, and they will once again capture gold. Three straight for the Savage Speeders. 2020, 2021, and now 2022. The Savage Speeders are dominant at the five meter relay. Fifth gold medal in six years. They've got the hat trick and they have put their stamp of authority on this event. They've basically monopolized it at this point. Two tenths clear of the crazy cat's eyes who get the silver. Another giant in racing events. They almost got their first gold. And hey, how about Minty Maniacs, by the way? They are in dead last in the Marble League. And they come from behind and take a step of the podium and get bronze behind two speedy teams. They deserve to be there. They may not have trended the best lately, but that is a great result. The Pinkies do keep the lead. Lots changing by the event in this one. We go from speed to endurance on the next one. Who will survive the funnels? We move from the rapidity of the relay to the endurance of the funnels as we enter event six here in the 2022 Marble League. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Well, we're a few events in and just looking at the stadium and the grounds and the village, it all seems that everybody is settling in pretty nicely. The newness of this Marble League has worn away in favor of the intensity of competition. And anybody who has watched these events before knows that when it comes to funnels, everything is up for grabs. The Pinkies still feel that way, certainly, after netting good points in each of their last three events until event five. That's when it all kind of came undone for them, but it was enough that they were able to hold on to the lead, 67 to 63, over the fairly consistent Crazy Cat Size. Knotted back there at 60 were the O'Rangers and the Bumblebees. Now the question is, who will be able to make it down these funnels in the longest amount of time? This is not a speed event per se, at least not speed for quickness right off the bat. What you're hoping for is endurance. Now look at the starting gate, how quickly they will drop, make that sharp right hand turn after they fall. There you go, into that orange funnel that begins the drop and we are off. So keep your eye on all of those who are up above. And right now it is the O'Rangers who will be the last to drop in to that first green funnel. You see that there are several ways to get around this course. It's not just green funnels. No, you have the little chutes and then the orange catch funnels that drop you into the main ones. Look at this up top, it's a two marble race now and the O'Rangers have lost the lead. It's Rezzy holding on to that top spot for the Raspberry Racers and taking time to drop on through. The O'Rangers in fact have lost a couple of spots. They were not the last marble prior to the Raspberry Racers to go through into orange funnel number two. Well, down below on the other hand, things are not going well. That's Mary for Team Primary that has just fallen through into the penultimate orange funnel. And look at this three marble battle up top. No, it has gone right down to one. That is a nice wide angle and good momentum that is being kept up by the Raspberry Racers. That's a team that sits in 15th in the standings with just 24 points. Dead last is at 23. That's the Shining Swarm, although they wouldn't like me to say that. Oh, nearly a whole funnel lead. It is for the Raspberry Racers down below. Who is struggling the most? That looks like, is that crazy cat size down there? I think it is. They might be the first to drop through. Oh my, that would not be a strong start for Yellow Eye. But got a bump and headed out a little wider there. And it looks like crazy cat size will avoid dead last. That infamous spot goes to the Bumblebees. Mary comes through next. Raspberry Racer still taking that wide line in the lead up top. 
And looking down below, Westby looks to be circling the event horizon now. Down they go. We're now up above two minutes. And the Raspberry Racers just need to hold on. Every marble that clears out of that final funnel gives them a quicker spot toward advancement. A quick twofer there for the Green Ducks, Captain Mallard, and then the Minty Maniacs. The Old Rangers come on through with Canoan. And now it's just about showboating or perhaps trying to save some energy. No use just spinning around like crazy here. You might as well drop on through because you have claimed top spot and most likely the top four are going to be moving on. So now we wait. To mild annoyance, in fact, for the Rangers and the Minty Maniacs fans. But this is a masterclass for how to do a funnel. 214 was second place. This is going to be almost 32 seconds longer in that funnel. Unbelievable from Resi for the Raspberry Racers. That was in heat number one. Yes, that's just a heat. So hopefully they have a little bit more left in the tank as they move on. As we see the dramatic slow-mos of that battle for those top few positions. First was seemingly never in doubt once you got about two or three funnels in. And a kind of hint before second heat starts. Race control, by the way, said that the final result of each marble is based on the moment they fell from the last funnel. They wanted me to pass that along to you for whatever reason. As we get ready here for the drop, and we're off in heat number two. First orange funnel as sometimes sorting these marbles out before they even drop into the first large green one. And what we see here is it's the Savage Speeders. Ooh, in a dangerous position there, ready to drop on through this funnel first. Will they be shoulder to side in favor of anybody else? Yes, they will. In fact, they're not even going to be the second or third marble to drop through. There go the Savage Speeders. They were not in a great spot prior to this. Now we've got Team Galactic, who is circling their way through and finally drop on in. We've got a couple of silver marbles, the other one Sterling, from the Shining Swarm. And now we've had a change of fortune. It appears that Mellow Yellow is in that top spot, although they didn't take a great line down into that second green funnel. Look at how quickly they are advancing toward the center. And they keep that momentum up. They might need a shove out of the way. Some contact. Oh, and they get it. They get it twice. Oh, my goodness. Wonderful strategy from the reserve of Mellow Yellow. As way down below, things are not going well. Is that the gliding glaciers all the way down there? Well, they might be a little bit higher up. No, 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 it is gliding glaciers. They're in a dangerous position. Meanwhile, it's a three marble battle. The Pinkies have joined the fight for the lead. Oh, contact there, and Mellow Yellow holds on once again. They gotta try to keep this up as best they can. They've entered that orange funnel with just the pinkies, and now they can dictate their own pathway. We've got a finisher. It's Alpine, the captain of the gliding glaciers. 142-61. That's not great. Meanwhile, Mellow Yellow, look at this crisscross that they have going on here. Masterful job with minimal contact, but is it gonna keep them in the lead? The pinkies are trying to say otherwise. They're trying to move them toward that event horizon, and they do! The pinkies have taken the lead. Oh, but then shot right on through. They lost their focus, and Mellow Yellow goes right back to provisional P1, if you will. But now they're in a dangerous spot. Their pathway is inside that of the Pinkies. We're getting down to the final few positions. Oh, Yeller goes on through. Mellow Yellow will go on to the final round. They do finish top four here, and it is Team Galactic who somehow get the win. I know Mellow Yellow are not going to be happy with fourth place there considering the lead that they had for most of that rather exciting round. But with the top four advancing from each, they've done enough. And perhaps that is the antithesis to what we saw for the Raspberry Racers going so long when they didn't need to. Yes, it was bragging rights to win the heat. It was just top four advancing. So they did not have to do all that much. Well, with the top four advancing, that means that the bottom four will not go on. So we see ninth through 16th, the gliding glaciers. Ah, oh, they did not have a great result at all. Bumblebees down there as well. Bumblebees kind of middle 
the upper part of the pack. They're running in fourth in the overall standing. Look at Crazy Cat's Eyes in second there in the Marble League. They finished 13th in this one. So the door is open. There are several marbles from the leaders who could score some good points here and several from farther back but may have an opportunity to make up some ground. Yes, that includes the captain of the Green Ducks who sit in ninth right now in the overall standings. And by luck of the draw, they were initially the last into that orange funnel. But that means very little in this event. The organizers have set things up very well. And perhaps that is the point of those orange entry catch funnels is to even things out after the starting gate. You see the steepness of this course. They drop through little by little, but when they do, it is straight down and a quick turn. As we hope to see up top, who is in the lead in this final? There we go. Hey, briefly, I believe it was the O'Rangers. Although they and Minty Maniacs were on a good wide line, but only the O'Rangers have been able to hold that so far. Oh, now there's contact. This is messing them up, and the O'Rangers lose the lead. You have to be watching at all times. You cannot break focus for a second. And it is the Green Ducks, Mallard, who leads, and a roar erupts from the pond. It is not to be, though, for much longer, as Mallard now loses that top spot. Mellow Yellow. Back on top where they were before. There's contact now. Oh, and I thought the Green Ducks were perhaps going to be a beneficiary of it, but they are not. Mellow Yellow holds the lead once more. Raspberry Racers and the Green Ducks are also circling in that catch funnel. Green Ducks come through second. Raspberry Racers keeping that momentum around. Every last bit that they can do, hoping that the chaos below takes care of itself. No, now they're mired right up in the middle of it. Contact all around. Mellow Yellow falls through early. Team Galactic have already finished along with the Pinkies. The lead is swinging back. The Green Ducks were battling for it right there along the Sterling of the Shining Swarm. Down below, four marbles are trying to avoid elimination. They want a medal. Oh, Yeller, sixth in the Marble League. That's Yeller's first event overall. It's not a terrible event, but here we go, our final three. Who's gonna get it? Raspberry Racers fall on through. Green Ducks are trying to keep it up with the Shining Swarm. Mallard comes through. They will get a silver. And the silver marble will get a gold. The Shining Swarm and Sterling go six seconds clear of the field to win gold. Shining Swarm. We're dead last coming into this event, 23 points. And they have netted more than that in just this single event. This was a fun one. My goodness, gold for the Shining Swarm, silver for the Green Ducks, and bronze for the Raspberry Racers, who were second to last in the overall standings. Wonderful result for the bottom two teams, Mellow Yellow, who is in 14th, well, they finished down in sixth. Yes, that was Yeller's first event in this Marble League. Top 10 finish, pretty good. Just shy of the top five. And let me tell you, that candle is burning a little brighter, and that giant duck down there behind the trophy is looking a tad bit happier, although I tested out some duck jokes on it earlier and did not get any reaction whatsoever. Well, I think this silver may get a slight turn out of that handsome duck. As we look at our podium... Wear those medals proud, my friends. Funnel endurance is always one that leaves you winded at the end. As we take a look at the standings after event six, the Pinkies still hold on to the top spot. Over now, the O'Rangers and Team Galactic. Crazy Cat's Eyes have fallen back to fourth in front of the Savage Speeders. Chalk the Tears are now bottom of the barrel, just behind Mellow Yellow by one point. Coming up next, one of my favorite events, rafting. And we hope to see you at the river. For the first time since 2019, the sounds of, to some, what may be a babbling brook, instead become a hotbed for competition as the rafting returns to the Marble League. Hey everybody, 
I'm Greg Woods taking a look at the standings as they currently sit. The Pinkies are on top 76 points to the Rangers 72, Team Galactic and Crazy Cat Size back with 66 apiece. 10 points behind that, the winners of this event back in 2019, the Green Ducks. As we see this test run, our first look at an extremely challenging course. It starts nice and open, but there you see that first drop. There will be a couple of these probably as they streak down the middle. In some parts, the river itself not that much wider than the raft on which the teams place their trust. Another drop, heavy vegetation. We saw that play a major part in this event back in 2019, keeping it out of the green stuff. Oh, you could hear the raft bottoming out on that drop making sure that you can navigate where there is water and where it's going in the right direction of where you want it, that's going to be absolutely crucial. As the green squad comes through, 37.56. Well, back when this was done the first time, 33.74 was the Marble League record, and it's the Chocolatiers who lead things off. And down they go, 39-7-0 was their run. Back in 2019, they finished 13th. The Chocolatiers for this one are dead last in the standings. Oh, and they get almost high-sided. Now they've got it back down the middle. One measure of success is seeing the craft wobbling back and forth. If you can keep it relatively straight and you're keeping all that momentum going forward. Oh, and there is another pitfall not getting caught on the edges. If you keep it down the middle, they've lost one. They nearly lost two marbles there. And that is gonna be one penalty second added to their time. Across the line they come, and in that uh, example run also, we saw that this drop down here has a bit of an eddy where you can get a couple of marbles caught. So we gotta be extra mindful because this water is raging quickly. We work in reverse championship order. Mellow Yellow come up now. They were 14th back in 2019. When they get a bit wonky there, it put them to the right side through the first drop and then reflexively it kicked them to the left and got them momentarily hung up. That is a sharp drop that they just withstood. All four marbles still in the raft. We know it can be done. We saw it in the example run. Oh, this is eating time all over the place. Pivoting around. You try to keep the rotations of the boat to a minimum. And 1.75 seconds is the difference. Second place. Balls of Chaos coming through now. A team that was actually in the top five. 37.58 was their fifth place back in 2019. Doing a decent job. Oh, they get caught. They take on some water. But they manage to get it going again. Good burst of speed through here. But, oh, they get wedged. Will they become unwedged? No, the water is just streaming over them at this point. It's waiting down the boat. They do get two tries. Given the speed of the water and the danger, the committee did agree ahead of time that two runs will be allowed. Those are some stipulations with that. They did not do it on purpose. Oh, no! They have done it twice. Well, that is not an accident if it happens twice like that. Oh, no, that is disaster. They will not get a time. The Balls of Chaos will finish last. They are 13th in the Marble League so far through six events. I don't see them moving up after that. The Midnight Wisps drop in, our silver medalists. The last time this event took place, and they're trying desperately to keep that boat pointed straight. That slight pitch to it can sometimes bounce off of the vegetation and they're wedged. Oh, I don't think they're gonna get undone there. In fact, if you do get wedged, it is better not to try to fight it because you get that second try. I like the ball going into the Ivy at Wrigley Field. You, oh, no! The shortest run so far. And the Midnight Wisps have done it twice. They will get a zero. No time. The Raspberry Racers 
We saw last time silver medalist get wedged twice going in front of them. And that just proves how difficult the conditions are today. That's saying nothing for the vegetation. It seems that both times that we saw the craft get wedged right there, it's been on the rocks. One of the narrowest sections of the entire course also comes at a point when the rapids are at their most turbulent. The team's struggling to keep the raft pointed straight at that crucial moment. And those who are going later in the order are gonna have the benefit of that foresight to know that that is a dangerous part of the course. They are doing much better here. You can see the boat trying to turn on them. They get through the weeds once. Through more of them, they had a brief hang up. But they are going further, down the drop. All four marbles stay on. Well, given the high number of DNFs so far, it is not out of the realm of possibility to think that just finishing this course is going to give you a distinct advantage. And the Raspberry Racers didn't just take their time, forget what I'm talking about. They put up a 36-1-8 and they go to first. The Minty Maniacs, very slow off of the gate there. They now have a new time to beat that's in the low 36s. They are trying and doing a good job so far. They've taken on a bit of water, but they're powering through it. Down the drop, oh, it all goes wrong. They've lost one marble. I think one is hanging on just barely, but is not in a seat. Did they correct? Oh my goodness. Twice now, one of the marbles has come out of the seat and will it find its way back? Oh, desperately trying and hanging on across the finish line. That is grit and determination. Even though that was not a great time, the fact that they had three of the four on there when they very easily could have had two or even one, that is a good recovery. It's team primary now. And amazing, they got a silver medal just two events ago. Well, three events now. But they sit down in 10th in the standings out of 16 teams. Team primary. Slow through there, perhaps being very purposeful with where they set this craft. That was a hard impact. Anytime you can hear the raft bottom out on the stone, you know that they have lost a little bit of time. Will it matter? It might have. Just under nine tenths down, they slot into second place as we get ready for the halfway point of the heat. Gliding glaciers. Down they come and oh, they briefly got stopped. Oh, should they have held up and not gone any further? That did catch them a bit off guard. And I think their instinct, of course, as competitors is to keep going, try to fix it. But we have seen there is advantage to getting caught and leaving it because you do get another run. Of course, that option is there for everybody. A lot of marbles not choosing to use that, however. They are trying to get this first run done, even if it does lose them time. The boat is spinning across the line. They aren't exactly perpendicular <laughs> as they come across. 2.52, good enough for fourth midway among those who have already gone. Well, if you're just joining us, we are down river rafting here in the Marble League. Each team getting two attempts. Some have needed it. Others have managed on the first go right away. Raspberry Racers hold the top spot for a team that was sixth the last time this event was run some three years ago. Water conditions, cold, it is running quickly. The Shining Swarm come up now. Long hold in the gate. Down they come, and immediately they turn sideways. They picked up a leaf as well. That is not going to help their maneuverability. They've managed to shake it off. Oh, but then it goes side by side with them, perhaps slowing them down incrementally. You can see that boat just beating side to side against the edges of this river. 
rather than keeping it in the middle. However, they have kept the boat pointing for the most part straight down this drop that was well navigated until the exit. Now you see the spinning, the back and forth. They are trying to get it under control. You do not want to be out of control through the drops. Instead, they have managed to finish, but nearly five seconds off. That is only good enough for sixth. And now, a roar from the crowd. Many people came down to this stream to watch this team, our gold medalists, from the first time this event happened. The Green Ducks, the hosts of the Marble League this year. What can they do? Can they put together another medal winning run? They're looking pretty good so far. Can they keep it off of the vegetation? Green, in this case, not good for the Green Ducks. But they do manage to get through the first salvo, down through the second drop. Everybody stays seated. And they pick up the pace. They're getting it turned a little. They've rotated the boat once. Across the line, it's a 38 and change it looked like. Oh, just shy of 38, 37, 8, 9. That is good enough for third. There's still a lot of runners left. But tentatively, the Green Ducks are hanging on by their webbed feet to a podium and a medal. The Bumblebees. They descend our sixth place team in the Marble League. They get caught right by the first drop. They've lost a marble as well. And they are going to opt to redo it. Oh boy. Now, this can be a luxury, yes. But this can also ramp up the pressure so much more because there is no do-over after this. And because they got caught so high up on the course, they have very little to go off of in terms of reading the stream. They're going to have to do it on the fly. Good thing that Bumblebees have wings. Through the greenery, trying to brush their way through. They get it back into the middle of the stream, through the next drop. Well handled on the exit. They don't want to rotate too much here. One turn is often not terrible, but you don't want to do two. They lazily drift across the line. What was the time? They move it a second. Two tenths off. The Bumblebees are now in a metal position. And unfortunately, that no longer is the case for the Green Ducks. Quick in the gate and off go the crazy cat size. They briefly get hung up. Fourth place team. Ooh. Not ideal. Now they pick it up. Rotating, rotating. They're keeping it in the middle. Very, very careful about where they place it. They avoided a lot of that greenery. Rather admirably, but they've lost two marbles. They keep two up in the middle, up at the front. Oh, but this run just went away from them as they limp across the line. They got hung up several times, and then the boat rolls afterward. Tenth for the crazy cat's eyes. My goodness. They were ninth in this event back in 19. The Savage Speeders. Off they come. Slowly banking side to side. Not a great exit from the first drop. They're trying to keep that boat going straight. Especially as they get down toward the next drop. Through this jungle portion. They made it. And through the second drop. All four marbles are still there. One rotation. And across they come. They were... A little high on the edge there, but they didn't lose too much time. Under a second. Behind our leaders, they move into fourth. Team Galactic. Third in the standings. Galactic. Fourth, just off of the podium. The last time in this event. 37-2-4. Oh, that boat was very close. To losing control, it seemed like. But they managed to keep it going. They got no penalty points last time. 
And really, there weren't a ton of teams that did back then. Just the bottom three of 16. Team Galactic, a decent run by the eye comes across, and it's a top five. With just a couple of marbles teams to go. Raspberry Racers have to be wondering what will their fate be? It's in the hands, in part, of the O-Rangers. Just 12th in 19. But second overall in the Marble League for this year. Oh, that was an impact with some bit of debris, and that slowed them down. They have to find some time in the bottom part of this course. If you listen very carefully, you can hear when the boat hits against the rock. But doing a decent job, though, of correcting some of the twist. Up until this point, when a lot of teams have the boat rotate on them, they manage to almost tail slide coming across, but it's only good enough for 10th. The O'Rangers lost four seconds on that run to the leaders. Now, finally, the team in the top spot so far in the Marble League. The Pinkies are off, and they are dragging a stick with them, it looks like. Oh, that puts them out of sorts coming through that drop and the complexion of those marbles with the raft makes it very difficult to see how many are on there. I think there are still four marbles on there. But that stick had to slow them down. That was an impact on something. Almost came to a complete stop. This is not looking good for the pinkies. If they can just keep it going through the bottom part of this course, they're picking up speed. That's about the straightest that I've seen a raft come over, and they move into second. Three hundredths off the leaders. The Pinkies have nabbed silver for a run that had so much that needed fixing, so many near disasters. The Pinkies hang on, but it's the Raspberry Racers who capture gold in rafting. Bumblebees with the bronze. Those top three separated by just two tenths of a second. That was a tremendous event. With disaster waiting around every turn, every rapid, as we plant overhanging the stream. And look at how waterlogged those marbles look. But I don't think they care one bit. I'm gonna let that Water roll off of them like water off of, uh... oh, I don't know, There's some saying with that. Well, either way, the Pinkies, with that result, keep the top spot. And they are now well clear of the O'Rangers. Team Galactic back there in third. Bumblebees also nodded with them. Savage Speeders come next. Crazy Cat's Eyes and the Green Ducks down there in seventh. It's the Midnight Wisps dead last in the standings. As we move on to the five meter sprint next time out, we hope that you will join us. I hope everyone has had a chance to dry off after the intense competition out in the river for rafting in the previous run that saw the Pinkies capture yet another medal. That's their fourth in seven events to lead the Marble League. Hey everybody. I'm Greg Woods, and like many, I'm wondering who is going to step up and challenge the Pinkies here in event number eight. It begins with the five meter sprint. You see the O'Rangers, Team Galactic, very close with the Bumblebees and Savage Speeders, Crazy Cat Size, and even the Green Ducks are also in that range within striking distance for the top couple of spots. As we see this one here, a straight blast down this course. These marbles entering this catch basin at some of the fastest speeds that you will see marbles cross that finish line. And of course, these not Marble League athletes. These are specialists, and we get ready for the all-arounders that come up to the top starting gate to try to cut into that lead that the Pinkies have. The five-meter sprint run on eight occasions prior to this one, and the record being held by the Oceanics, who also are tied to the Savage Speeders for most podiums in this event, with four. Ready for the first heat, Green Ducks, Midnight Wisps, Savage Speeders there. Green Ducks, perhaps out in front. Oh, look at the bottom lane there. Team Galactic challenging the Savage Speeders. And that's gonna be really close. 
and by 11 thousandths, rapidly gets the win in the heat. Well, the Savage Speeders, we knew that they are going to challenge in this one, especially since the Oceanics aren't here. Who else will be in the running? The Rangers have that lead, but look on the bottom there. Raspberry Racers are very close to them. They end up finding a bit more speed at the bottom. And I think the Raspberry Racers, yes, Razzie comes by with a 5704. That's a nice run. And these margins have been absolutely razor thin. This event may be quick, but it carries a large number of points with it, just like all the other events do. So those 5.7 seconds, they matter. Mellow Yellow, Pinkies, Crazy Cat's Eyes, and the Shining Swarm now. I can tell from that angle, I think Mellow Yellow may be out in front. Crazy Cat's Eyes come by by a length and capture the win. 5.625. That is also rather speedy. That is a new record, in fact. 5.625 set by Green Eye. Well, of course, that was just in a heat, but that has this stadium absolutely buzzing. Will we see that record fall in the final? Chocolatiers, Gliding Glaciers, Bumblebees, and Minty Maniacs. Chocolatiers and Minty Maniacs out of the gate well. Chocolatiers by five lengths. Across they come. And that was a wire-to-wire -wire win. Five, seven, three, eight. Boy, six hundredths and eight hundredths. Separating second and third from the winners. As we see, ninth through 16. Pinky Winky just missing out. Green Ducks finishing down there in 10th, not where they would like to be ideally. And we see some of the past winners in, on both sides of this one. Mellow Yellow won this event back in 2017 and in 2019 in the Marble League, two in a row. And interesting to see that we have not seen that much consistency since then. Perhaps out of the Savage Speeders we have, and they are going to win another one. Coming across the line in this semifinal, they go 5.636. That's a good time. Beating Green Eye from the Crazy Cat side. Those top two, I believe, will advance to the final. Savage Speeders so far have looked on it. Raspberry Racers, Team Galactic, Chalk the Tears, and Mellow Yellow. Raspberry Racers got out of the gate very quickly. Mellow Yellow on the bottom is going to challenge them, but I don't think it'll be enough to get by. It will not. 13 thousandths between them. The captain of the Raspberry Racers beats the captain of Mellow Yellow. Raspberry Racers won this event in the friendly round. The Rangers, Minty Maniacs, Team Galactic, and Chocolatiers, they go no further and fill out fifth through eighth. One more time. Still in search of that trophy. Ready now for the final. Crazy Cat's Eyes, Raspberry Racers, Mellow Yellow, and Savage Speeders. Off they go. It's Crazy Cat's Eyes up top. Savage Speeders, they're fading. Mellow Yellow on the lane three. And that will be gold for Mellow Yellow. Razzie comes in second and gets the silver for the Raspberry Racers. Savage Speeders have been dethroned. They get the bronze. Well, I just had to mention the consistency of Mellow Yellow, even though that was three years ago for the last time that they won this event. They did it two years in a row. Savage Speeders went from winner to runner-up to not even on the podium. And then bronze, not on the podium. And now they're back. So you just never really know in terms of the pathway that these marbles will take in their quest for glory. Mellow Yellow, Raspberry Racers, and Savage Speeders are our medalists. Congratulations. As the
the standings after this event. The Pinkies still hold on the top spot, but Savage Speeders are in second place with the O-Rangers. Team Galactic, Raspberry Racers are all in there. Crazy Cat Size, Bumblebees, Green Ducks have dropped to eighth now. Well, congrats to our podium finishers as we get ready for the Marble League Showdown coming up. We hope that you will stick around for that and finish out afterward the conclusion of the Marble League. an absolute staple of the Marble League that tests all of these competitors' strength and teamwork. It all comes together, hopefully, in block pushing. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. We enter the ninth event of the Marble League. It's going by quickly, isn't it? After eight events, the Pinkies are up on top in front of the Savage Speeders, the O'Rangers and Team Galactic, Raspberry Racers all very close, the Crazy Cat Size and Bumblebees in there as well. Just mere points separating them, nine points separating second from seventh in the Marble League. And as we work our way through, we can begin to understand the pressure ratchets up. As we see how this event goes, the teams descend with different strategies apiece and attempt to push those blocks as far as they can Sometimes it helps if you're all together. Sometimes they bring one off the back as kind of a hammer to help push them at the end. That's what a lot of teams tend to do. But you'll have differing trains of thought as the marbles train their way down this course. Twelve times this has been featured in various competitions over the years. The record belonging to the Raspberry Racers from last year, 92.95. Most podiums, though, in the overall of everything, is five by the Midnight Wisps. Green Ducks, Midnight Wisps, the aforementioned. Bumblebees and Balls of Chaos in the blocks to start now with Group 1, Push 1. A big split developing in that bottom lane, and it does not pay off for them at all. That was a very poor effort. On the flip side of that, the Bumblebees have pushed it out past 80. That is 84.75. That was disaster from Balls of Chaos. I'm not sure if they were completely ready for that starting gate to rise. Well, sometimes you do get that fourth marble split, as some call it, but instead, that was half the team forgetting to go. Balls of Chaos move to the outside now. Green Ducks, Midnight Wisps, and Bumblebees from far to near. Off they go, and it's a slightly better result on the start, and it's a better result at the finish as well for Balls of Chaos, but I think from that camera angle, is it the Green Ducks? Let's see here. 78-4-5. Pretty good from the Green Ducks on that one. That is the farthest between the two rounds. I believe that green, meaning the three of the four, improved. They go again. This time a nice flourish by the Green Ducks. That gets them again out by 85 almost. 84.95, it's improvement for the Ducks and for the Wisps. Three teams past 80, Balls of Chaos, eh, not so much. All right, final push here, I believe, in group one. And a couple of clicks for the Wisps and the Bumblebees at the end, but it does not get them where they need to go. Nobody improves on the fourth push, which is somewhat to be expected given the strength and the output that it took to get them three pushes already. And uh, I believe we now know how this is scored. They run four times and their top two count toward the final score. So the green actually means that it counts. Raspberry Racers, Chocolatiers, Savage Speeders, and the Crazy Cat Size. The Chocolatiers, it looked like we're going to impact first. Oh, look at Savage Speeders there. It was a very delayed fourth marble, but it's a wonderful push. 88.4 on their first go. Raspberry Racers very close with the Chocolatiers. Crazy Cat Size have a bit to catch up. Fans knowing that was just the first one. What do these teams have in store? How much are they saving up, by the way, 
It is one thing to try to give it your all when your energy is high, but it's another to manage that energy level. Oh, and that is a tremendous push from the Savage Speeders. I think they were doing the latter of what I was just about to say, and that is learning on the first and setting a new Marble League record on the second. 93.10. That is above the 92.95 that the Raspberry Racers set one year ago. Posed by the sign because someone should put that on a poster. 93. The official record as it goes. And we're ready for push number three. Do they have anything left after that? Oh, yes, they do. They want that record to extend, but they're not going to do it. They will get close to 90, however. Nice one for the Raspberry Racers and Chocolatiers. They both improved. Chocolatiers to 84.20. Well, and as we now know, the improvement means that they have improved at least on their second best run, if not their best overall. Next up, we'll see how they fall in the overall order. For 93, that is going to be tough to beat from the Savage Speeders. Off they go once again. This time, Raspberry Racers fall well behind after seeing their record fall. Nobody improves on the fourth attempt. That is two in a row that we have had no improvement. But like I said, that is not terribly surprising. Panning our way up toward the commentary booth. Yes, if you noticed us Instead of the duck, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. Up to that flame. As you can see, not a lot of wind blowing across the pond. And there we see the current leader. So it is a cumulative score across four pushes. And a 182.75 is the leader. And you can see all of the differences between when some of these teams made their absolute best run. Some of them are early, some of them are late, not too many on the fourth. Gliding Glaciers, Primary, The Swarm, and Galactic. Galactic get out of the gate first, but they are a bit split, and it does not work that well for them at all. Team Primary. Decent consistency, those top three coming in, that fourth hammer marble pushes them forward past 80. And that is where they sit. Switch them around, so this four heat format allows every marble team to experience every lane. That definitely equalizes everything. And was this Shining Swarm, I believe? Looked like they have had a successful team outing. They do, it's a 92-3-0. That is getting close to record range. Wow. Everybody improves on that run. Group tree, push tree. Off they go. And surging well past 95, we've got another new Marble League record. Team Galactic have smashed it, 98.30. I think the crowd is just in disbelief. Where everybody else finished, that's normally where a good solid run ends. But they are miles past that. Oh my gosh, they take just enough time to do a quick picture in front of the sign, but they are ready to go again. Can they better it? What can they do? Well, they do get close to 90. And those are two very good runs. Only the Gliding Glaciers improved on run four. But wow, the record has fallen twice in three groups. Team Galactic move to the top spot, 187, 30. They've got a 98 and an 89 to their credit. And it's the Speeders, Shining Swarm, nicely done in their first two runs to get them into bronze medal position. Mellow Yellow, Pinkies, O'Rangers, and the Minty Maniacs. Pinkies with a slight lead. Mellow Yellow got them heading into the blocks. It doesn't translate to distance, however. Pinkies get past 80. Disappointing for the Minty Maniacs, even though they stayed relatively bunched. 
the power did not materialize. Let's see if they've learned from that first attempt. Separation from Mellow Yellow. They actually had a 1-3 formation going, and then they just barely lost that fourth marble on initial impact. Still kept enough to give one more hit to get them to 86. That's a nice total, too. Anytime you've got those two 80s in your pocket pushing past the mid-80s, you know that you're going to be climbing up the ladder. Question is, can they keep it through these next two pushes? And they're off. Nice tight formation from the Minty Maniacs. But once again, a nice run by Mellow Yellow. Only Minty Maniacs improved on that one. But well done, Mellow Yellow. Putting some consistent runs together. They were bronze medalists back in 2019 at this event. But that's the only time that they have appeared on the podium. One more time, Pinkies or Rangers, Minty Maniacs and Mellow Yellow. Can anybody challenge for the lead? Consistency reigns supreme for Mellow Yellow as they put another improvement, 86.25. Now, and somebody do that math quickly because that is mighty impressive. Their top two is good enough for third. Galactic and the Speeders are the ones that will stand on the top step of the podium. Mellow Yellow comes in third on the final run, but it's once again Team Galactic, who started off this Marble League with two straight gold medals, and then nothing since. We'll add in another one, because they are champions of block pushing. Take a look at the standings after Event 9. Team Galactic have done enough to move into a tie for the lead with the Pinkies. Pinkies have four overall medals, Galactic three, but they're all gold. Then it's Savage Speeders, or Rangers, Bumblebees, Raspberry Racers, all right in there with a little bit of separation down to Mellow Yellow. After a brief jaunt back inside of the stadium for block pushing, we now return to the great outdoors for the challenge that is triathlon. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Look at this sinewy course that we will be moving down, but that is just one of three elements, of course, making up the eponymous triathlon. Started back in 2020, for instance, when we did the sand and then going on to this style of track and then underwater. A year later, it was the track, the sand, and then underwater. And I can tell you, we have reached the double digits for events here in the Marble League, and we are knotted up front. Galactic and the Pinky, Savage Speeders, two points back. But look at this middle tier, how close it is from the Orangers all the way back through the Green Ducks, just 12 points separating them. And that means that so much is up for grabs. This course especially could separate some of those marbles, depending on who is the best all-rounder, which in some ways is the definition of what it means to win the Marble League. Well, those are all around great views right there, tucked inside of one of the turns. And you see eight marbles in the blocks to start things off for what we can only imagine will be the first of two heats. The other heat will include the other eight marbles. Some of these have been medalists before in previous events. And these particular marbles are off. Three captains in the group as they begin. Oh, somebody just left the track. Was that uh, Midnight Wisps, I believe? Wispy, I think, is out. Launched off the track. We'll have to see what happened there as they enter the sand for the first time. You can see the speed really building up. The Green Ducks had held the lead, but now it looks like Savage Speeders, who deliver some contact and a block to get them farther up. Green Ducks get back into second. Then we've got a couple of those silver marbles close behind. It's Galactic and the Gliding Glaciers are battling side by side. Here they come into the water. Savage Speeders first to enter, but will they hold it to the line? We see some clever drafting. Three marbles all alongside. As they move to the line, and the Bumblebees are going to come across as they descend down to the bottom of your screen. 
And that was a close battle. Is this the contact that, yes, that sent the Midnight Wisps up into the air? And there's some contact going back and forth. Oh, that might have been Cosmo, I believe, who had that contact. On those replays, it did just look like a racing incident. And yes, race control has confirmed that. Disappointing for the Wisps. One of two captains to finish there at the bottom of the result. Team Galactic, well, they will move on, but they'll be maybe feeling a little sheepish because of that. Racing incident, however, that's as far as you can take it. One more heat to go before we decide our finalists. These marbles have an advantage because they have seen the track and how the previous eight raced. We are about to find out as they descend through the track portion. It is Minty Maniacs out in front, although the O'Rangers just had a magnificent burst of speed and nearly took second place. They fall back and hold third in front of the Raspberry Racers who just lose out to Mellow Yellow. This is Shining Swarm now trying to give chase to Minty Maniacs in second place. Here they come. They're closing in the gap as they enter the sand. O'Rangers kind of in a land of their own. They tend to do well on the sand, but how do things change when they come into the water? Well, they change a lot. Minty Maniacs have lost the lead. They are crawling right now. They've fallen back to third, possibly fourth. Oh, Rangers challenging for the lead. They get it. Who's going to get fourth, though? The final transfer spot. That was very close. As we take a look, did Primary somehow get it? Yes, they did just barely by three hundredths of a second over Yeller. Wow. Yellow, the reserve for Mellow Yellow, came that close. The water portion does not make up a huge chunk of this race by distance or time, but it is absolutely climactic and crucial to master. We've seen so far some marbles just barreling into it, hoping that they will be able to get it under control and others making great use of the toe if they get behind another marble. The bottom three in that order? Well, our championship leaders in the Marble League are one of them and one of three captains to finish at the bottom of the order. That is surprising. So with the leaders out, does this open the door to any of these marbles that you see on your screen, especially the likes of Team Galactic? Off we go for the final. And it's Shining Swarm out in front. Team Galactic very close behind. Savage Speeders with a nice outside move into that turn as we snake back and forth through the track section. It's almost a slalom with the speed that they move through here. They're entering the sand. That was a good battle there for third place. How does it shake out? Savage Speeders have fallen back to third. Last medalist position. Well out in front. Team Galactic, a massive lead. Onto the sand, nearly into the water. Here we come. Into the water they dive. It's Team Galactics to lose at this point. Shining Swarm is in there, but look at the Bumblebees. They're trying to catch that draft. They come across the line. I don't know who got third place, but Team Galactic have done enough and have won gold in the triathlon. And by three hundredths of a second, the Bumblebees have done it again. They hold on at the line by a nose. Was it a proboscis? I don't know. Look at how close this battle was. Team Galactic, wire to wire, almost. That was unbelievable. And for Cosmo, the captain of Team Galactic, the first individual medal in their career. And that is worth applause. Went over a second faster in the final than in the heat. Well, the triathlon is always going to give you some unexpected results, especially when you get that close down there in the end. And we see Team Galactic coming through as champions at an opportune time when the Pinkies were relegated into the bottom eight. But of course, also the Bumblebees are up there. And here we take a look. Perfect timing at the updated standings. And what a jump. Team Galactic shoots to the front well over the Savage Speeders. Pinkies fall back to third. Bumblebees are close behind with the O'Rangers. And the Raspberry Racers, Gliding Glaciers, Mellow Yellow Green Ducks, and Crazy Cat Size all fairly close. Boy, with a few events to go, this is 
up for grabs, especially in the middle section of the standings. Who will find their way to the front or who will defend their leader position? You'll have to stay tuned and find out. No doubt you have seen in this jubilant stadium where the flame is burning a little extra bright today, you have seen the wave make its way around these stands through the fans several times. But for now, we turn our attention to the wave on the playing field itself, the swing wave. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Well, this isn't about hanging 10, but what you can do if you win through precision rolling is hang 25 points on your opponents. That's what Team Galactic did to the leaders, the Pinkies, in the last event, the triathlon, when the Pinkies were eliminated in the bottom eight. Galactic responded with a win to give themselves 25 points and a bit of space between them and the second place Savage Speeders. Those three teams, will that battle continue into this particular event or will some of the midfield begin to step up as we head toward the final quarter of the season? These two squads will show us exactly how it's done. Try to get as far down through the waves as you can without oh, going into that red catch basin. You'll notice each of the dips in the wave, the valleys correspond to a point total, but the basin does not. And that's why you see the two that ended up there get a big zero apiece. So yes, keep that momentum as far as you can, but the edge between hitting the 10 and going a bit extra, that is just a knife's edge difference. Which of these professional marble teams will be able to get that just right? And who will make some moves here in event number 11? We start off with the Green Ducks and the Savage Speeders. The Ducks down in ninth compared to second in the overall Marble League standings. And here they go. Speeders dump one into the zero. Each team has one in the 10. Ducks have two in the eight. That should help them quite a bit. Oh yes, 33 to 23 here in heat one of 16. Now an interesting wrinkle that you will notice, unlike some of the other track events that we've seen, like block pushing or even the relays, is there's no barrier to separate these two teams. So you will see some argy-bargy over the course of this one, some physicality coming on display, in addition to the precision that is needed to pick just the right valley in which your momentum will cease. All right, we switch sides. Keep that in mind as they come down here. Watch where the marbles position themselves. They start off side by side. Oh, there was some early contact, and they've shed two of the green ducks. Nobody makes it into that catch basin, but nice points haul for the speeders who get one marble apiece in each of the last four valleys. Ducks have two in the 10, but it's not enough. 34 to 28. That puts the speeders on top. So this appears to be a best of two heats between these teams. Primary and Crazy Cat Size up now. Down they come, and that is exactly what we wondered about. That contact early stops two marbles, one from each team, all the way back in the three. And it looks like Primary, at least Primary, possibly Crazy Cat Size, I think, have one in that catch basin as well. Yeah, two zeros up on the board there. This makes it a much closer battle than we thought it would be. 22 to 21. Wow. So you see position three and four. So this is comparing them to those who have already won. Keep your eye on that after each of these heats. Crazy cat's eyes and team primary. The teams sitting in 10th and 11th respectively in the Marble League standings, but still kind of on the edge of that middle tier where they can still try to make a run if possible. Down we go again. More early contact, but they're staying a bit cleaner this time. Unfortunately, they sacrifice some distance. Nobody making it past nine. But I think Crazy Cat's Eyes... Yes, they will. We'll get a better result here, 30 to 24. That moves them up into third spot Overall. Mm -hmm. 
through the first four of 16 heats. We move on to the Shining Swarm and Mellow Yellow. Oh, Mellow Yellow puts one in the basin, but look at that team result for the Shining Swarm. Three in the nine. That is a tremendous result with one in the 10. That is absolutely going to be the leading point total with 37. Yes, it is. Just three from a perfect 40. Well, that is going to be hard to beat as we move on through these next few heats. Shining Swarm and Mellow Yellow. Oh! Mellow Yellow has a team member that has shot off the side of the track. What happened there? They've got one all the way back in the three, two in the eight. All of the Shining Swarm are down in those final four valleys. But Mellow Yellow, let's see here. Oh, that was... Very interesting. Yellim. Not. Wow, that is very unlucky. Didn't see a lot of contact between marbles there. That was just an odd happenstance. Well, it doesn't reflect well in their point total either. Galactic and the Pinkies. Team Galactic, they leave one well off the back and put one too far. So the Pinkies are going to cruise in this one. In the head-to-head -head at least. And that gives them 32 points. Not a bad result, but just off of the podium in fourth. Everybody chasing that Shining Swarm 37. We can see the crowd buzzing on this one. Very interesting to see the between team dynamics as they start to work their way at the beginning of the course versus at the end where they're trying to pinpoint the ending. You see a lot less contact toward the end. Oh, this is interesting. The Pinkies have one stranded in between. I don't think I've ever seen this. So Race Control said that Pinky Winky they have passed the Valley of Floor 9. Well, no, they will give them a 10 since they are past 9. But they will not give them the top spot on the tiebreak. So if two or more team has the same score, the score of the second run will be used to break the tie. If two or more teams both have a tie in the best and second run, then the number of 10s will be used to determine the winner. So that second run being a 37, and then it goes back to uh, 32 versus 34, and I think in that case also being stranded at the top of a peak would mean that you, you probably couldn't give them the tie break. But the odds that that would happen, and I, I don't imagine that that's what the Pinkies were trying. You don't get extra brownie points for doing that. But uh, wow, that is unique. Well, we see the O'Rangers and the Raspberry Racers going on now. I know that's a lot to take in. The O'Rangers have pushed one too far. Raspberry Racers, then they get 32 compared to 27. So good enough for fifth for the Raspberry Racers. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll try to come back and revisit that a little while later, but getting stuck on the peak... Just as a quick recap, the race control decided that because they had passed through that valley of 9 and were at the start of 10, they could give them 10 because they were not trapped in the 9. But interestingly, that gives them a tie break. Oh, look at this! 3 in the 10, but 1 too far. That is a great run for those 3 marbles, but it's only worth 30. Well, the O'Rangers also dump one too far. Point difference is 30 to 24. So the Racers will hold fifth. So yes, because they had those two runs at 37, they look at the other run. Shining Swarm had 34 compared to 32. That is why they are still in the lead. Chocolatiers and the Minty Maniacs now. 
as they're all spread out and intermingling, and the Chocolatiers. One too far. Nice run by the Minty Maniacs. Three marbles at least, but uh, lagging back in six point. Is that going to hurt him? No, not too much. That 36 is tentatively good enough for third. The Minty Maniacs, who are down in 14th in the standings. They've got one medal over the course of this event. That coming back in the fifth event of the Marble League. That was a silver at the time. Can they do any better this time? Oh, Chocolatiers broke one off well early in the two spot. I think that's the earliest that we've seen a stoppage so far. But this is lackluster for the Minty Maniacs, 28 to 17. Wow, that is that is uh, the bitter flavor for the Chocolatiers, just 17 points. So still at the top, 37 is the point total to beat. What can the Bumblebees and the Gliding Glaciers do? Ooh, fairly even with those back marbles. Bumblebees lose one for a zero. There's the other. Oh, no, they've got two as the camera pans out. Two made it all the way to the end. That is disastrous. The Bumblebees have just 14, which is coincidentally also their provisional position. Ouch. They'll switch sides and see if they can gather themselves together again. How close do they try to stay in this one? You don't want to get too close because if you bump into each other, that can actually change your pathway and your ending position. They do recover nicely and get uh, 19 points just with those two marbles alone, so that surpasses what they had. Their 28 puts them into the top 10. Gliding Glaciers, their first run was good enough for fifth. So the Pinkies and the Shining Swarm are holding on to the top spot. Balls of Chaos and the Midnight Wisps come up now. Nice overhead, look at him progressing too far. Ooh, with some contact in between as they come to a rest, but the Midnight Wisps get two in the nine, one in the eight, and one in the six, but 10, eight, and seven on the other side. Comes to 25, so 32 points for the Wisps. Puts them into the top 10. One run left to go, both for them and for this competition as a whole. The Midnight Wisps and the Balls of Chaos. Down they come. Balls of Chaos have lost one early. Midnight Wisps put one in the catch basin. And what will this point total be? They've equalized in the 10 up there, one apiece. Two for Balls of Chaos in the eight compared to one for the Wisps. A seven and a six. 32 to 25. They have the same point in two attempts. According to the rule, Balls of Chaos has more 10 points in total. So that means that they will move ahead of the Midnight Wisps on the tie break. Wow, this scoring has had a lot of number crunching to do over the course of this event. But up top, the Shining Swarm. We'll see that gold medal shining just a bit more as they net 25 points and a gold. Congratulations to the Pinkies and the Minty Maniacs, who are our other podium finishers. And in the overall of things, look at how much this swung. Team Galactic capitalized in the triathlon by getting 25 points to a low point total from the Pinkies. This time, the Pinkies are up there, and Team Galactic dead last with zero points. That will tighten things up in the standings immensely. Congratulations to the Shining Swarm, who were 12th in the Marble League. And Team Maniacs 14th. Pinkies were up there in third in the standings, but uh, those two teams to your right there, in the center and in third, they're going to be pretty happy to try to work their way up the table. Here we see it. Team Galactic now just three points is all. Clear of the Pinkies. Two back to Savage Speeders, and then we get a bit of a sizable gap to the Bumblebees, but that's fairly close between them and the Raspberry Racers, Shining Swarm, Orangers, Gliding Glaciers, and the Green Ducks are still in the hunt in that mid-pack. 
as we are nearing the three-quarter mark. Who will be able to bring it home for Marvel League Immortality? Hello, fellow Marvels. Welcome to our today's event, Domino Gold. The final quarter of the Marvel League season begins with a throwback to Marvel Maniacs one year ago in Domino Bowling. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. This an interestingly scored event that has a bit of strategy mixed in as well as we take a look at the overall standings after 11 events. Galactic holds the top spot just barely, but it's very close between the Pinkies and the Savage Speeders who swapped positions after the last event. Bumblebees, Raspberry Racers, Shining Swarm jumped up six spots in the last outing. And we take a look at how scoring works. So the different color dominoes give different points. So if you knock those down, you get more. Now the easier ones to knock down are worth fewer points and those far red ones out of the edge, that means that somehow you were way off and I think even that handsome duck would see a little bit of shame in knocking those down. In our example run, we have the green leader coming down now. A strike dead in the middle, which I imagine you will see some marbles accidentally do. You don't want to hit it dead on necessarily because it does give you that pattern of chaos directly down the middle. And of course, you do avoid the red ones. You do get the maximum point if you have deep enough push to get toward that LED domino. Oh, and then you risk that one happening as well if the skipper can't get enough curve on the shot. Just follows the pathway directly. Somebody has to get creative to up the point total. Well, back at the time in Marvel Maniacs, this was won by the Pookies. Runners up the Purple Rockets and the Constrictors coming in third place. Hey, there's the Purple Rockets on that screen. Balls of Chaos. Down they come for the first roll. And that goes off to the near side. Only five dominoes knocked down, though. And just nine points. Snarl, the reserve, who will come up now and attempt to clean up. Ops for the left side and does get a couple more of those center dominoes down. And what will the scoring be? Remember, the blue is not worth too much. Oh, nine apiece. Not a great total. The example run got more than that, and goodness knows you don't want to have that happen for marble athletes that are specific for this type of competition. Granted, those example runs do tend to practice a bit more than what these marbles get to do. The Bumblebees drop in with Swax, the reserve. Peeling off to the near side. That was not a great angle because only four dominoes knocked down. One of the green ones will net a few points, but just seven overall. Next attempt, it grazes one of the blues, but in turn knocks down a yellow and the LED, which is worth five. 18 points tied for the lead. The Bumblebees sit fourth in the standings right now, 110 for their point total, chasing that 135 from Team Galactic. They have three bronze medals over the course of this one. Crazy Cat's Eyes coming up now. They've got a silver and a bronze. Their first strike. Not too bad. That LED domino is still standing. Ten on the first. They get two greens and a yellow. Along with those couple of blue one-pointers. Now Green Eye comes down. Hits it dead on the mark. And that knocks quite a few of them back. What is this point total? This should put them up in the lead. Yes, it does. 26 points for the 10th place overall Crazy Cat size. They're looking to climb up in the order. With fewer events remaining, of course, you're going to start to see those teams eliminated at the bottom of the standings, and they do not want to be there. Fudge, the reserve from the Chocolatiers, will come on down. Oh, this is coming off to the right side. Ho, ho. I think there was contact made with that red domino. Yes, it was dislodged but not knocked down. Ooh, you will lose points if you are that far off. And Fudge claiming just six points. 
Let's see if the second run goes a bit better for the Chocolatiers. There's a much more consistent line. And just 12 from Coco. Does get that LED domino to fall, however. And they move into third spot. Domino Bowling has its own unique charm in the Marble League. One of those events that maybe not full action all the time, but it's a lot of precision, and it is a bit of strategy. But it's also, I think, a little bit of fun for these marbles. Look at the speed that they will achieve when they drop down this ramp. And listen to the cheer for this team in particular, because it's the hosts. Oh, and that was a phenomenal strike. An excellent throw. 29 points from Billy, and they still have one marble to go. Unbelievable, what can this do? Ah, got too wide of a split that time. I don't think they wanted to flirt with those red dominoes getting too far to the edges. Instead, they just kept it right down the middle with Goose. And that's okay, 29 points. That is the closest that we've seen to a strike so far. Alpine, the captain for the Gliding Glaciers, queues up now. Coming over to the near side, look out! The red one goes. Knocked down two blues, but that red is worth minus three. That's a negative one on the point total. Is the redemption to be found? Yes, not terrible. I'm surprised actually they didn't opt to go more for the near side sheet knowing that there's no red domino to knock down over here instead they end up on the far side and still get some points at least they are in the positive so far minty swirl coming down this is fairly straight they get the led domino and a few others 18 points not too bad that is within striking distance of the top spot if they have a good second throw. Down they come, what will it be? They chip a few more away, but I don't think that is going to be enough to eclipse 29, no it isn't, 23, but still, third spot right now for the Minty Maniacs who are down in 13th in the overall standings. Two bronze medals and they would love to add more if possible. Waspy coming down now, trying to clear the way for the captain of the Midnight Wisps up next. Just 14. That's pretty good, though. I think we get a similar result from Wispy. We'll have to see. Coming to the near side a bit more. Oh, and instead goes right down the middle. That is disappointment for the Midnight Wisps, didn't even make any of the dominoes quiver. Eight spot for the Wisps. There you see the first eight to go. Ties are broken by the individual best score. And then also those first red, green, and blue dominoes, then green, yellow, blue, and red. A lot of work to get the bowling alley in order here in the pond, but they have done an exquisite job of setting up those dominoes. And of course, the Green Ducks have to be feeling pretty good about where they are in these standings right now. They could be on the precipice of a nice points haul. Mellow Yellow in the gate now, and down they come. A strike right of center. The LED domino does go, and that's a 20-point total. The captain of Mellow Yellow puts in a wonderful first throw. Here comes the skipper. And knocks down two blues. Not high in points, but not disaster like knocking down a red. Yellow adds two. Mellow Yellow goes to four. The O'Rangers come up now. Captain Kinnowen in the blocks. Tangerine, 
The reserve ready to go, the Rangers. Seventh in the overall. Down they come and lay a trail left of center on this one. They did not get that LED domino, just nine points. That looked a little better than what it ended up being. Second attempt. A bit more chaos going directly down the middle. They'll get five points from that back LED and 21 total to put them tentatively into the top five. The Pinkies now as we are coming down toward the bottom of the order. Just a few teams left. This one, second place in the standings, and that is worthy of a top team in the Marble League. 29 points on the first roll. Pinky Winky. What a start. Talk about laying down the gauntlet. Now the ideal pathway here would be slightly to the left of center. If they can manage it, they do hit it right on the nose at least, but they do get a few of those left to go. And that is 34 points and the Pinkies go to P1. Well, I can tell you that there have been so many fans that are just surprised but absolutely thrilled at how the Pinkies have been so resurgent this year in the Marble League. Raspberry Racers in the blocks. Fifth place team. They're chasing that mark. Just set one before them. So they've seen how it's done. They can't quite make it work on that one. The strategy that was employed there to get in between two of the blocks and get them spreading outward toward the back. That ends up creating the most chaos. You see a little bit of that here. They've got to be really careful. They did nudge that red block. But it does stay up. Oh, it, it tried to go over, but it stayed. Whew. Savage Speeders coming up now. Third place in the standings. They've won one medal of each color so far. They strike dead on the center. That will leave a bit of a split. The question is, can Wizzy, the reserve of the speeders, get the angle just right? Oh, goodness, the answer is no. An errant roll. They don't really have gutters here, so it isn't necessarily a gutter ball, but you knock down the red, you lose three. Savage Speeders, a little disappointed on that one, even though they seemed somewhat jubilant. So we need to tell them about the red domino, I don't know. The Shining Swarm net just five points on the first throw from Shimmer. Their captain, Shiny. On for the second. That one's much better, a strike right in the middle. The LED domino falls and they move into fourth place. For a team that is sixth in the standings, that's not too shabby. And now our leaders in the Marble League, Team Galactic. Their first roll is disappointing. Just three dominoes and four points. They've got to play catch up. They need almost a strike here. They've got to have a great throw and it doesn't happen. The door is open for the Pinkies to overtake Team Galactic in the overall standings. 13th place and they will be left wondering what could have been. Prim drops in now for Team Primary. Comes to the near side, but does manage to get a bit better in the back couple of rows. Yeah, a yellow and a green go down. Nine points for Prim. Second roll, very similar, just on the other side. 15th place. Pretty paltry for team primary. They are 12th in the standings right now, just one medal to their credit through 11 events, and they're not gonna get one here. Well, what I can tell you we do have is a winner. The Pinkies, they get it. 
with 34 points, five clear of the Green Ducks who are absolutely ecstatic to get another silver on their own turf. Green Ducks, that is their third silver of these games. That should help them in the order of it. Shining Swarm, they net a bronze. That is their first of that color. Previously, they've had two golds. Ducks will be quacking with a bit more happiness this time as they look to position themselves for a run at the top five in the standings. What happens here? Well, they do move up two. They are one point off of fifth and sixth. The Pinkies do predictably jump back up to the top spot over Team Galactic. Shining Swarm gains two. And I believe, did I see we've got an elimination already? Oh my, there's only more of those to come. Where will your team end up? Will they make a run? Be sure to subscribe and tune in next time as we have the Aquathlon next. Hello, fellow Welcome to today's event. For event 13 of the 2022 Marvel League, we return to the Aquathlon, an event that was first seen back in 2020, won at the time by the Midnight Wisps, a rather unique event, but one well suited in the interests of the Green Ducks. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. The Ducks did move up two spots into seventh in the overall standings, but those big red numbers at the bottom, not what you want to see if you're a Balls of Chaos or Midnight Wisps fan. They have been statistically eliminated from winning the Marble League. Up top, though, a lot for play for the Pinkies, Team Galactic, Savage Speeder, Shining Swarm, and so much more. In this example run, you see the run down, the dive into the water, then they descend, and it's the third marble when that crosses the line for each of the teams, that is the time that they will be given. So it's not necessarily your top two, and it's not the fourth marble, it is the third. So you just have to have your top three, and boy, that is a wonderfully close result. We'll have to see if that stands over the course of this event. The flame burning a little bit brighter here over this tank of water and the chute. You'll notice those targets down there in the bottom. That was from the old diving event, which will not be featured in the Marble League this year, but you may remember it from the past. The Green Ducks and the Bumblebees will start things off, and how does this go? One of the members of the Green Ducks will be first into the water after a bit of contact, but again, it's that third marble as they descend down toward the finish line. Who's going to have it here? Green Ducks have two or three up there. I think the Bumblebees are going to get them, though. Yes, they did. Yes, 12-2-6 to 12-8-0. It may take a couple of runs to train your eyes. I know we're used to looking at the front, but with this one, you have to find that third marble, and that's really the race between them. Midnight Wisps, the winners of the Aquathlon back in 2020, even though they didn't get the record. Well, they've now already lost the possibility of winning the championship. After the failure of Domino Bowling, we heard that their technical director has been fired. Let's see if that makes a difference. The Wisps are going to get the win here, and they will move on. Yes, I may have misspoken earlier. It is the Hazers that have the record in the event, 17.44 at the time for that setup. Obviously, it's a different setup for this time, so we can't directly carry over the times. But the Wisps did win over the Savage Speeders and the Hazers in third. We see the safety marbles up top in that raft as the O'Rangers and the Gliding Glaciers prepare to descend here in Heat 3. The O'Rangers move to the side and try blocking the Gliding Glaciers. We'll see if that strategy works for them, and I don't think it has. Let's see the overhead view. Oh, this may be good. It's going to be close. No, it's not going to be close, actually. The O'Rangers making some wonderful moves in the final few lengths. And look at that. All three of their marbles nearly beat every one of the Gliding Glaciers. That's impressive. Now that does represent an interesting bit of strategy for this event. This run down the chute, what do you do? Are you aggressive there? Team primary, crazy cat size. They're spreading all over the place, weaving back and forth, trying to not just draft, but block each other. Crazy cat size will cross the line first, but that third marble is going to be really close. Who got it there? Oh, by three hundredths of a second, the crazy cat size. I knew that was going to be... A photo finish that is so incredibly close. That's a bit of refraction on that water, as you would expect, but there's so much that goes on underneath 
And think about what the marbles have to go through as Melon Yellow and Shining Swarm come down now. You have this physical portion up top, but then once you get in the water, it totally changes the strategy. Are you trying to get in the slipstream of another marble? Are you trying to spread out wide? Oh, that was a nice lunge for the Shining Swarm. And I think they got by. They were left a clear bit of space down the track. Yes, they did. Look at them on the top there, the far end from this camera. And with most of Mellow Yellow to the near side, that gave them a wonderful opportunity to work together for the team that is sitting in fourth in the Marble League right now with 119 points to the leader Pinkies, 157. Chocolatiers and Balls of Chaos, two teams at the bottom of the order right now, and the Chocolatiers have set themselves up nicely as they dive into the water. It's a bit of a gap back, but it changes once they dive in. Their water speed is maybe not ideal, but they do manage to clear the line. And that was a lot of ground made up by Balls of Chaos, considering where they were entering the water. To bring that back to five hundredths of a second, that is commendable. Chocolatiers have to feel good about that. Of course, they have not been eliminated, but every team under them has. 16 points is the difference between 14th to 15th. The eliminated balls of chaos that could close today. Savage Speeders and Raspberry Racers come down now. The Racers opted for the near side, but now they're in the draft. And what can they do? The Savage Speeders have that lead with three of their marbles, possibly even four. Around they come, and that was fairly easy for the Speeders. Second place back in 2020 in this event. Nearly three-tenths is the margin here in heat number seven. One more heat to go. In just the second time that the Aquathlon has been held, it is the Minty Maniacs and the Marble League leading Pinkies. They're going to have to catch up some ground because they have three marbles, the Minty Maniacs do. What do the Pinkies have as they enter onto the screen? Oh, this is going to be very close between the third, but the Minty Maniacs will hold on and eliminate the leaders. A tenth and a half, about half a length, is what gave them that win. Minty Maniacs, who sit down in 12th in the standings, not going to be down there now. Pinkies are the ones in 12th. After that first elimination, Green Ducks, ooh, let's kind of forget about that. 12.80, 100th behind Team Primary. Galactic just misses out on the transfer spot, and some of these were oh so close. Others, not necessarily, but that also gets back at the idea that these were heats. What have you learned from the heats into the finals? Especially after studying some of these other teams. Sometimes you'll have team managers and technical directors that watch very closely, if they're not looking at that duck, of course, making sure that they can pick up the tendencies of some of these teams as we enter into the quarterfinals. It's the Bumblebees and Midnight Wisps. Good stratification here, and I think the Wisps were a bit behind, but a wonderful entry into the water. They all spread out wide. They're going to be nearly single file across as they come across the line. Couldn't really tell from there. Oh, by a tenth. Look at how close they all were. Probably three lengths was all that separated every single marble. Wow, the Wisps. The Rangers and Crazy Cat's Eyes now. Down they come. The Rangers have three marbles up there. That would give them the win. But everything changes when they dive in, and there was hesitation by the Rangers once they entered the water. Perhaps took a second to get their bearings. Is that going to cost them the win? I don't think so. Where will they be? Oh! This angle much clearer. 12-4-9. The Rangers move out of the quarterfinals. Rangers won gold to their name so far in this Marble League. As we get down to the final few events, they drop to eight after event number 12. Shining Swarm and the Chocolatiers here. Shining Swarm tries to get out with all three of them always in the lead. They can only manage two, but that third one was making a move as they come down into the water. This is where the Chocolatiers made some great gains last time. Oh, they're all bunched up, and that's going to be a photo finish. What will it be? Oh, my God. 
goodness, nine hundredths, the Shining Swarm will move on. Fortunately, it's not a see-through canoe, so those referees are probably just watching on the big board. But hey, they get a nice day out on the water. Savage Speeders and the Minty Maniacs. Down they come to Speeders, trying to stop the Maniacs from working together. They got into a diamond formation briefly. Here they come into the water. It'll be Speeders first across the line. They've got three marbles up there, but they're losing ground. Oh boy. That is another one that is oh so close. A tenth of a second by the eye. Oh man, that is amazing. The timing and scoring could figure. I'm surprised that the gap was as big as it was for that one. As we see fifth through eighth, Chocolatiers, Minty Maniacs, Bumblebees, and Crazy Cat's Eyes. Still a lot to play for for some of these teams. Higher up the order. Oh, Rangers, Midnight Wisps, a lot of contact as they come down the chute. Into the water, will they be separated? No, they're all bunched up at the front there. The Wisps were out in the lead, but I think the o Rangers get three of them across, catching the slipstream. They will move on. Also by a little over a tenth. Great teamwork there by the O-Rangers. Unlike what we saw in that Noah Yellow run, they did not give the Wisps too much space. But they just did enough to disrupt them. It's one thing to catch the slipstream, but if you can get enough of your marbles together, you can actually create turbulence behind that will slow your competitors. Shining Swarm and the Savage Speeders. Down they come. Shining Swarm have three up there. Speeders try to get two. What can they do for their teammates? They all spread out wide, and the Speeders are again up at the front. Look at this. Oh, man, that's another really close one. The Shining Swarm made some ground, and by five hundredths of a second, they upset the Speeders. Wow, I know Shining Swarm is very close with the Savage Speeders in the standings, third to fourth, but the Speeders were silver medalists in this event back in 2020 and they've been looking so good and now they're relegated to the third place match wisps and the speeders speeders have three tucked together as they enter the water oh and they're well out ahead but speed from the midnight wisps the savage speeders trying to go three abreast and they come across the line for an easy bronze congratulations to now two-time medalists in the aquaflon the savage speeders That is their second bronze of these games and the fourth medal overall. But now we get ready for the final. Oh, Rangers and Shining Swarm. Down they come, oh, Rangers, marginally quicker out of the gate. They try to squeeze the Shining Swarm over as they enter the water, two to one. Now they spread out wide, those are Rangers trying to get back into that tuck formation. The three of them coming across the line and I think they've done it. We'll wait for official timing and scoring. And yes, they do! By half a second, my goodness! They were beaten back in 2020 in the first round by the Oceanics. And now they have gone all the way to the top. 25 points and a gold medal for the O-Rangers. Their second medal of these games, both of them gold, Shining Swarm, they get the silver. That's their first silver of the Marble League. Two golds and one bronze to go along with that, but a nice points haul compared to Galactic and the Savage Speeders. Galactic haven't been performing terribly well of late. Nice couple of events, and that's why they dropped out of that top spot, and they may fall even farther. Oh, Rangers, though, they're all dried off. They're standing on that top step of the podium, proud of their gold. As we take a look at the standings now, two more teams have been eliminated at the bottom, Primary and the Chocolatiers. Team Galactic have dropped to third as the Savage Speeders get by, now nine points behind the Pinkies. Shining Swarm in fourth, and look at that jump up into fifth by the O-Rangers. As we get ready for the final couple of events in this Marble League, can you believe it? Already. Well, once everybody dries off, we hope to see you in the next one 
for the Sand Rally. With just three events left in the Marble League in 2022, only three quarters of the teams are still mathematically able to win the championship. And so when we come to this classic event, back to our roots in the Sand Marble Rally, the question is, who will it benefit? Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Well, I know it's benefiting the fans, certainly, who come to watch this staple of the Marble League. But will it benefit more the top of the order or those who are giving chase? For instance, like the old Rangers, who moved up three spots after the last event up into the top five. It's very close in several sections of that order for the championship. Now this is structured a bit differently. Unlike in 2021, instead of two group heats and a final, it is a straight blast for the medals. It was like this back in 2019 as well. Just want to set the stage for that. By the way, do you know that 60% of our viewers are not subscribed to this channel? Subscribe and stay tuned for future JMR events. And hey, we've got some Bubble Bees fans in the audience. Sitting trackside, talk about an immersive experience. All right. Well, there you see all of the marbles lined up side by side. No heats in this one. Straight to the finish. Some five captains in the order. Off we go. Blue Eye got off to the lead for just a moment, but it's Team Primary who holds the top spot right now. Some contact early on between Primary and Crazy Cat's Eyes. Chalk the Tears back there also holding up that big train of marbles. Everybody's still really close in the early goings here. Swinging around that right-hander. Now a bit of separation. Blue Eye for the Crazy Cat's Eyes is holding in second spot, but coming under pressure from the Chocolatiers. Going back and forth right now, they've actually closed up a bit. Shining Swarm goes into second spot. Chocolatiers in fourth. Green Ducks running nicely in fifth. Of course, as I say that, they fall back in the order. Lots of position changes right now in that battle for the top few positions there in the podium. is going back and forth by the second. Team Primary holding on. Shining Swarm have been coming up there a bit closer each time as we swing through. Oh, we've got somebody out. That was Kid Owen of the Old Rangers. Beached on the wall. I'm not sure if they'll be able to get going again. Shining Swarm, as we say that, takes the lead over Team Primary. And the Old Rangers, by the way, are out of this event. They have not been able to get going again. Chocolatiers holding third. That's the bronze medal position. Midnight Wisps are fighting with the Gliding Glaciers back there. They've been going side by side several times. The Gliding Glaciers are trying to make that move by Alpine to get up into that spot, moving back and forth, but cannot get there. Green Ducks also locked in a battle with the Pinkies who lead the championship overall, and the Pinkies get by. Shining Swarm, their lead, 10, 15 lengths, but it's coming down now. Team Primary is very close. This is a long track, by the way. We're down to the final quarter of it. And the Chocolatiers are still holding back there. Who's going to make that move among those top three? Or will we see somebody like the Gliding Glaciers or the Green Ducks in fifth be able to get up there on the podium? Shining Swarm trying to hold on. That's Shimmer at the point. And the Shining Swarm, top five team in the Marble League. It's come right down. And Team Primary is trying to make the move. Back and forth they go. There was some contact. They weave side to side. Here they try it again, but they're denied. Shining Swarm will come across the line and win gold. Team Primary gets the silver. Chocolatiers get the bronze. The debris at the start that they had to fight through. And this is interesting. Two of our medalists are from teams that are not able to win the Marble League. The Rangers, they are one of the teams that we're still in the hunt, but that zero is going to hurt. The Shining Swarm, the biggest benefactor, many of the top teams, Lighting Glaciers, they're also down the order, they're in 10th. This was a nice points haul for the fourth place team. The replay looking at the line, the top two, three and four, and then quite a gap back to the Pinkies. Green Ducks, though, they have a nice showing and pick up a solid points haul in the process. Shining Swarm, they get their third gold medal of these games. And what does it do for their chances in the standings? They move up the second spot, but look at this. Half of the teams are eliminated. All the way up to ninth, and the Gliding Glaciers, 
Blue Green Ducks are on the bubble right now. That was one of the decisive moves here in replay between the Shining Swarm and Team Primary as we head into the collision. This is all aiming toward one heck of a collision in the final two events to win the Marble League Championship. Hello, fellow marbles. Welcome to our today's event. Half of the field has been eliminated in the chase for the championship in Marble League 2022 as we come to the penultimate event of the season. Arguably the most physical one there is, Collision. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. The Pinkies and the Shining Swarm leading the Savage Speeders and Team Galactic 5th through 8th into the chance, but it is a small one, including our hosts, the Green Ducks. This particular event agreed upon by the teams to be readmitted to the Marble League if it was at the end of the season. Given the physicality, given the toll that it takes on these marbles, they wanted to put it later on. And you also see a bit of a throwback, those old starting gates supplied by Yellow Tech. Some of the original designs from the early iterations of this event in the Marble League, they will be used this year because, well, they just flat work compared to some technical issues that we were having with the new ones. I asked that wonderful duck for a comment on the closing of the Marble League. And, well, I think it was emotional because it was completely speechless. No response. All right, match one. The Green Ducks and the hosts come on down. Fighting against the Midnight Wisps. They do release those heavy ball bearings, but not the smaller ones. We've known those as electrons. Oh, well, we do see a couple. One comes across at least. And wow, there were several marbles that had opportunities to hang on, but they could not. It ends in a scoreless draw. That's okay, this is group stage, as long as you get some wins or some good points differentials later on. Bumblebees now, and the Minty Maniacs. Slightly different formations as they come down, and quite a few marbles staying on the course. I believe it looks like, unless somebody else is hiding somewhere, that the Bumblebees will get the win. Yes, they do. So the Minty Maniacs will be moving on. Here in Group A, we switch things up. It is the Green Ducks and the Bumblebees, and the Green Ducks shoot three to the top side, four to the top side, but they all stay on. In fact, all five of the Green Ducks have stayed on. That is about as well as you can do. Well, it's not quite a 5-0, but wow, that's enough to get the quack attack going. Midnight Wisps and the Minty Maniacs come down now. Oh, those electrons being thrown. Will anybody fall because of it? No. The Midnight Wisps, oh, yes, they will right at the end. They found a gap in the fence. 3-0. The Minty Maniacs hold on. This group stage competition it can excuse one or two mistakes as we get ready for match five. The Maniacs and the Green Ducks, and this time, nearly everybody clears off except for two Green Ducks. Unless there's somebody hiding down there in front of that ball bearing. Ah, yes, there is. Just barely see it. It's still enough for a win, though. 2-1. The Green Ducks paddle on by. They are fighting for their continuation in the Marble League right now. They are the team that is on the bubble. Oh, and this is a wonderful overhead look at the different formations that these two teams have. And we see four of the Minty Maniacs holding on compared to just two of the Bumblebees. Most of that damage done early on. The Green Ducks and the Minty Maniacs will move on the Midnight Wisps and the Bumblebees, who sit in sixth in the standings, they are eliminated. We go to Group B now, with the Raspberry Racers and the Pinkies. Off they go. Ball bearings being shot everywhere. Most of the marbles are down on that near side, but they manage to avoid it. Four stay on for the Pinkies, and that gives them a one-point win. Savage Speeders and the Crazy Cat's Eyes now. 
Savage Speeders needing the good results to continue. They are sitting in third in the standings. They dropped one after the last event. And they are 18 points back of the Pinkies. And they draw on this one. Oh, that was a hard hit for Blue Eye down the near side. You see that? Solid collision took out two of the wall blocks. Going to be feeling that one in the next matchup. Raspberry Racers and Savage Speeders. Talk about an old rivalry here. Oh, and look at this big gaping hole on the bottom side. The Speeders are teetering. And they hold on. But what do the other numbers do? Ah, it is a draw. Speeders instantly lost two to the near side. And there's another one up on the top right. Speeders trying to stay in it. Pinkies and the Cats are leaders in the Marble League compared to a team that is in 10th and eliminated. And the crazy cat size have held on on this one, two to one. They upset the leaders. The cats trying to find some semblance of any reason to celebrate. But the way that this has gone, yes, they did get a couple of medals. It's not enough to save them. What do they do on this one against the Raspberry Racers? And the Racers, they've kept everybody. That's a five marble keep. Five to two. And they easily triumph. And there were some close calls on that one. With a mighty robust, if you ask me. Pinkies and the Speeders. Pinkies need a good result here. They've lost a couple. They still have at least three of them on, but there's one on the far end there trying to hold on, and I believe they have. Yes, they have. Three to two. Pinkies, oh, we're hearing they will qualify. Wow. Coach Pinky promised the technical director, Pinky Spud. They are quite pleased with how they set that up. I know we haven't done a ton of slow-mo views on the actual formations. You'll see the diamond. You'll see the spear. Sometimes there's versions they call the hammer. There's all kinds of different ways to approach this event and whatever they did to get out of what some in the run-up to this have called the group of death. That is commendable. As we enter into the next group here, who are not too shabby on their own, Mellow Yellow and the Chocolatiers, they draw. Two teams that are out in the standings. They cannot win. How about the Shining Swarm? They have been the talk of a lot of people's Marble League. And right now, they're trying not to lose that one over there. Woohoo! Very close. Did they do enough? Unless any marbles are hidden underneath that starting gate, they've spread back out. Ah, they do get that win. Two to one. The Shining Swarm have surprised everybody. I mean, of course, so have the Pinkies. But the resurgence of late, they jumped two spots after the last event to move into second place, eight points behind the Pinkies. So if they advance out of this group, that'll be a storyline moving forward. Mellow Yellow will try their hand against the Swarm now, and the Swarm have lost two on the near side. And I think one up top, but watch these big ball bearings. What's gonna happen with the electrons shooting across? The smaller ones do no more damage. And it is a two nil win for the Shining Swarm. Hey, the fans have been swarming in here to get a piece of the action because this is the peak. I mean, this is chasing immortality. As we get ready for this next matchup here. Balls of chaos. Oh, in fact, both teams did not keep a single marble on. All right, well, never mind. <laughs> that, that does go as a draw. It could be worse. It could be a loss. Balls of chaos and mellow yellow now. Down they come. Balls of chaos. They've got four on the near side. Oh, they lose one up top. But for the team that sits last in the standings, they've got to be feeling good about that. Three to one. Balls of chaos. Up end, mellow yellow. Chaos reigning in that match at least. But will they be able to move on? Chocolatiers and the Shining Swarm. Chocolatiers come with a three marble front, and that clear space for the back two 
and that will give them the victory. So that three marble line got a little out of sorts. Shining Swarm could not put it together on their side. And they drop another. The Chocolatiers do move on, as do the Shining Swarm. Balls of Chaos, they are eliminated, unfortunately, for them. And Mellow Yellow also down in the bottom spot. So, Shining Swarm and the Chocolatiers. Chocolatiers, by the way, are in 14th. Good result for them. Gliding Glaciers now against Team Primary. Team Primary got two spinning in the middle, three in total. And I believe that should give them the win. Wonderful redirection of energy. Keeping those two marbles just spinning in place. That is nicely done for a team that is 12th in the standings. The O-Rangers, they're in fifth compared to Team Galactic, who, I don't know, maybe they finished there once or twice. I don't really remember. Ball bearings released, but I think we've got a draw. Galactic, by the way, sitting in fourth in the standings right now, contrary to what you may have been thinking. Three all. Some of these other teams' fans watching in disbelief at some of the physicality that we have seen. Hard impacts, Marvel's actually lifting up in the air. That was a good formation from the O'Rangers, but I don't know if it's going to pay off. I think we've got a draw here. Yes, we do. They were tight at the beginning. The impact splayed them out wide. A couple of them managed to catch some of the barriers that do not move. And that is one strategy that you can have to avoid careening through one of those green walls. Primary and Galactic. Down they come. It's almost a, like a curvature, a line by Galactic. Don't know what their thinking was on that one, but it's not going to hurt them all too much. Well, from that angle, it looks a bit more sensible as they go to a 2-2 draw. Team Galactic, four gold medals. And no other ones, no other color. So it's feast or famine for them. We're in the blocks once again. Loads of silver out on the course right now. Oh, I think one of those small ball bearing traps failed to fire. Question is, we'll need to see from the top angle which of these silver teams got it. It was Team Galactic, 3-0 over the Gliding Glaciers. They are the first team eliminated among those who cannot win the Marble League now. They did actually jump up one spot, but it wasn't enough. Five points behind the Green Ducks, but that margin is too much statistically to get the Gliding Glaciers a chance to run at the championship. The O-Rangers come down now against Team Primary. The O-Rangers and Primary, I think, have four apiece. Yes, they do. One early loss to the bottom side. One late loss to the top side for the O-Rangers at the end. The referees haven't had too much to do up there on the starting gate. You're going with tried and true. You're going with what works. And I can tell you what works right now. Galactic and Team Primary. They get by. The O-Rangers in fifth place are eliminated. They will go no further. As we take a look at the bottom of the order, you're looking at the points differential there as we now move on to the quarterfinals. Green Ducks come through and all oh, lose a bunch of them early. But so too do the Chocolatiers. Watch this marble trailing to the bottom side. This could decide the match. Oh, the Green Ducks hold. Sometimes there are friction advantages to webbed feet, if they had them. Well, that was dicey. 2-2 Two -two to decide on the draw. And it will be the Green Ducks who advance. Watch this marble going to brush against the wall. No, peels away from it. Nicely done. To the hosts. They end up splitting the Chocolatiers. That was an interesting one. Chocolatiers, I think, were hoping to maybe redirect the ducks into each other, and instead they just zipped right on through. Pinkies and Team Primary. Down they come. Ball bearings released instantly. Collisions even late. Oh, watch over there on the far side. The Pinkies lose one, and that may have decided it. 
Boy, one of those pinkies actually went up the ramp. Yes, it did. Oh, my goodness. They almost had the match. Watch to the right side here to go to overtime. Oh, and did they actually come together, or was it just a matter of not being able to hold on? But Team Primary, 12th place in the standings, knockoff number one. Shining Swarm and the Minty Maniacs now. The Maniacs send two to the opposite side, in fact, collide into each other. And that favors the second place Shining Swarm, for whom the door has swung wide open to make an assault on the lead of the standings. Even though this is only going to be a draw for them. So we'll re-rack and do the tiebreak. 3-3. In the tiebreak. Wonderful management by the Minty Maniacs. They were so close together, they sent two of their teammates backwards. One to the far side, again, hitting that immovable object. That's what you want to aim for in a situation like this. And the Minty Maniacs will move on. Team Galactic and the Raspberry Racers. Oh, good penetration there by Team Galactic. And will it pay off in points? I believe it has. 3-2, they will get the win. Black, ooh, a solid impact by one of those large ball bearings, but the wall may have given, but Galactic did not. So even with the same points difference, Shining Swarm is ahead of the Chocolatiers for having more points for. But notice also that we didn't add the overtime result into the counting to keep it fair for everybody. But there you see, fifth through eighth. Four teams have moved on. The Green Ducks are one of them. Team Primary, the other. The Ducks send three backwards. Two of them are spinning. But I think Team Primary have done enough here to force overtime. Yes, they have. 3-3. Three, three. You're much more limited in formations when you get into this but it becomes much more of a straight fight. How do they do? Solid impacts. The Green Ducks hold on to two. One marble rolling to the near side. Oh, Green Ducks, they lose one to the top side. A groan from the crowd. Team Primary have knocked off the Ducks. Team Primary, two silvers. They're hoping for better. Minty Maniacs and Team Galactic. A lot of marbles still on the board. Let's see if this is going to be another draw or... No! Team Galactic get the win. 4-3. All of them are mostly that right side. One just left of center. And they advance to the final. We do have a third place match to decide the bronze, however. But well done to some of these fans. Their teams may have been eliminated early on, but they want to see how this one ends. And also, they realize the end is nigh. It's coming up quick. The end of the Marble League. This is third place. Green Ducks, Minty Maniacs. Collision here. And it looks like three Green Ducks are headed off to the far side, but they're staying on the table. And I think I only see two Minty Maniacs. The Green Ducks get the bronze. Win for a team that is on the cusp of being eliminated statistically. They are going to get a nice points haul here. Will it keep them out of elimination? We'll have to see. This to decide the gold. Team Galactic, Team Primary. Different formations for each of them. And this is going to be a win for Team Primary. Team Galactic sent a different formation than what we have seen them do before. It's almost an L shape, and as a result, that adds in a couple of extra collisions, and Team Primary comes away with the win. Well done to Team Primary. They have their first gold medal, their third medal overall in these games. They will move up the order, of course, eliminated. They can't win the championship, but look at that. Two finalists both from Group D. 
lot of eyes turning to the numbers now. They are being crunched at the moment to decide who will move up where, who falls out of the order, who falls out of contention. The first pan down for some celebrations, however. Congratulations to Team Primary for their gold, Team Galactic for their color conscious silver, and the Green Ducks for the bronze. Oh, but the Green Ducks are eliminated. Only four teams can now win the championship as we head into the final event. The Pinkies, the Shining Swarm, Team Galactic, and the Savage Speeders. And so, who will stand at the top of the Greenick Pond? Who will win the Marble League in 2022? Find out after the elimination race next time. Fifteen events have been a veritable roller coaster for all of the competitors hosted by the Green Ducks here in this 2022 Marble League. The bumps, the bruises, the toil, the strife, all of the difficulty has led to this. Four teams still eligible to win the greatest prize in all of Marble Athletics. This, the final event of the Marble League, but also the 100th event in Marble League history, we will crown a champion today. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Boy, it is hard to believe that we have made it to the final event already. This the elimination race, and you will see in classic honeycomb format how this works. The final marble across there for these teams helps to determine who will be eliminated. We'll re-rack them and do it all over again as we see the lineup for the elimination race. A few captains, a few reserves, some tried and true members who these teams have felt earned their chance to chase a Marble League championship. For those four teams, permutations here. We've got your permutations. There's a bunch of them. The Pinkies and the Shining Swarm. It doesn't get much simpler than this. If you win this event, you are Marble League champions. But those are the only two who can do it as such. Look on the flip side for the Savage Speeders. If they finish anywhere other than first, they cannot win the championship. And even if they do finish first, they need a lot of help to get them to that top spot. Team Galactic, it's a bit more mixed for them. If they finish in the top half, that increases their chances, but they really need some help. They need to finish first or second to have a fighting opportunity to get the win. As we see, the Pinkies have finished first here, so they guarantee that they are moving on. This is very close to the end there. Crazy Cat's Eyes came across last, but I think we've got a marble. Yeah, Balls of Chaos. They're stuck up there. Oh, wow. Balls of Chaos. Ugh. They have broken the lowest point record in the Marble League set by the Oceanics. This comes at least after the restructuring of the Marble League. But Balls of Chaos... That dubious distinction, the lowest point total of anyone in the current format of the Marble League. Ouch. Chaos did not rain. Chaos fell flat. All right, second attempt. Here we go. Bumblebees and the Green Ducks are back there. Mellow Yellow Savage Speeders, they fall to last. They're going to need to improve greatly if they hope to advance. Will they? Oh, they have. Wow, Minty Maniacs come through in 15th. They are eliminated. They are stuck up there, higher up the course. Wow, two for two on getting a marble caught. But for a while there, the Savage Speeders were in dangerous territory. Mellow Yellow also back there. Didn't end up mattering because we did have a marble caught higher up the course. This sort of format lends itself fairly well to seeing who finishes where and matching those with those permutations. Ooh, crazy cat's eyes. Bumblebees are also far back. They have to play some catch up. Looks like Team Galactic and the Shining Swarm are also down there briefly. Oh, a nice burst of speed. But the Bumblebees will be eliminated. They are caught right there at the end. Oh, wow. There were going to be some last gasp efforts to avoid elimination, especially with those large ball bearings being released. Look at that dive bomb move. 
Oh, wow. All right, so the Pinkies will get at least two points, and that means that the Savage Speeders cannot win the Marble League. They cannot win on the tiebreak of medals. They were going to need the Pinkies to finish 15th or worse, and that has not happened. The Savage Speeders are eliminated from winning the Marble League. Coming across now, the Arrangers. Savage Speeders, Crazy Cat Size, Team Primary, and Chocolatiers will come across as the final runner in 13th, and they will be eliminated. This is so tough because of the duration of this event, too. You cannot expend your energy early on because you have to have it late, or else you won't be able to go all the way until the end at the caliber that these marbles compete. Down we come once more. Green Ducks are leading the way. The Night Wisps are also up there. The Orangers are trailing behind. They're trying to catch up to the likes of the Savage Speeders and a few others who are well back there. The hosts are safe this time. Getting down to the end, the Orangers cannot improve. They are eliminated. Of course, the Orangers were not in the mix anyway, even though they usually are. So you'd be forgiven thinking that they had a shot at the championship. But they will go no further. Down we come once more. And it's Raspberry Racers who are well back behind. That's Ruzzy, the reserve for them. Although now that swings back the other way. Is that Team Galactic that was back there? Oh, that would be a change. Here we come. They're all funneling down. Oh, Galactic are trying to get up there. I think they have. Yes. And it's Midnight Wisps who are eliminated. But who? just for Team Galactic. Yikes. Of course, Team Galactic, if they finish seventh or lower, they are eliminated. But even if they finish above that, in that, it's a fourth through sixth position, their chances are fairly low. They're going to need some help. And also, you're seeing, for instance, the Pinkies, as they keep surviving, the farther up they finish, the more that eliminates some of these other teams, too. We'll guide you through in just a moment because this group at the back is very tight. Pinkies do survive this time. Oh, we got a stuck marble. And that is Yellup from the Mellow Yellow. Mellow Yellow is out. Wow. Just nosed square into that honeycomb. No movement at all. All right, we are getting into round eight. Off we go. Crazy Cat Size are the team now in the elimination spot. Decent amount of daylight. Oh, Team Primary. They are stuck on the wall there, briefly. And through here, the dash to the line. Shining Swarm are eliminated. Wow, the Shining Swarm cannot win the championship now. The team that is currently in second place. They had to finish above 12th and get some help, and it's not happening. So the Savage Speeders and Shining Swarm are out now, and it's only Team Galactic and the Pinkies. But the farther up the order the Pinkies keep finishing, well, Team Galactic, they have to keep finishing even higher. For instance, Pinkies can finish as high as third, but Team Galactic have to finish in second place. Down we come, Raspberry Racers are trailing off the back of the field. That's Crazy Cat's Eyes once again, but now they're all getting closer as those traps are falling down. That throws the field out even more. Galactic have done enough. They finish just ahead of the Pinkies. Green Ducks are safe, and it's Crazy Cat's Eyes to whom we bid adieu in seventh place. Team Galactic, I think, are feeling the urgency. They understand the severity of this situation. They have to keep going. Once more, onto the breach. It is round 10. And Team Galactic are very slow, getting hung up on the wall. Could this be it for them? They have to, oh, Speedy got stuck. Never mind. A reprieve this time. Savage Speeders are eliminated. Of course, they were going to be eliminated anyway because the Pinkies are finishing better than 15th. Green Ducks, they're still in it. 
Could they deliver one last medal to those fans who have seen them through thick and thin over the course of this Marble League? Well, wouldn't that be great? Round 11. Half a dozen marbles remain. Oh, and do we have uh, somebody stuck? Primary is stuck, but they are bumped free. Wow, the Pinkies. They get a bump back forward, but will they be able to stay in the elimination race? Yes, they will. Nice recovery. Gliding Glaciers are eliminated. Green Ducks just scraped by. Wow, there were some tense moments there. Team Primary got stuck, the Pinkies got stuck. They bumped into each other twice. Look at that contact right there between Green Ducks and the Gliding Glaciers. And the Gliding Glaciers will glide right out of this competition. All right, five to go, and down we come. Pinkies are out in the lead. Raspberry Racers, now they pick up some speed and try to get by them. Team Galactic is also fighting up there. They have to finish higher up in this order. Top two are well out in front of somebody stuck. Pinkies have crossed. Oh, Team Galactic! They're stuck! Team Galactic finishes in fifth. They are eliminated. And the Pinkies are Marble League champions. How fitting. Starry gets stuck while in fifth place. And I can hear the collective groan of the Team Galactic fan base. But it's Pinky Power. They have done enough. Regardless of if they can claim a medal here, they will win the Marble League. They're going to need to get going, in fact, if they do want to stand on that podium. Oh, look at this finish. Unbelievable. Closing in the lower part of this track. Pinkies will be guaranteed a medal, as will the Green Ducks. I know they are jubilant throughout the stadium, are the Pinkies fans and those who are cheering for the Pinkies from maybe some eliminated fan bases, but there is still a medal to play for in this event. Wow, Pinkies fans, you can exhale a little. What will the color of their medal be to close out their championship? How good does it feel to hear that? The oh, Green Ducks are going to have to play catch up. They are in the bottom spot. Pinkies are out in front. No, they hit the honeycomb. They're neck and neck with the Raspberry Racers into the final portion of the Raspberry Racers. They stutter. They hold up for a second. Will they be able to win this round? Yes, they will. The Green Ducks get second place. They are not eliminated. The Pinkies will claim the bronze. I know our Marble League champions would have loved to come away with a gold in the final event, but instead they will get a medal and pad their total and be able to stand on the podium one more time. The Green Ducks are going to be going head to head with the Raspberry Racers for a gold medal in the final event of the 2022 Marble League. And down we go. Contact already several times between these two marbles. They're trying to separate each other to go some different pathways, and only now are they able to. The Green Ducks with a lead, but speed coming from the Raspberry Racers. Green Ducks trying to stay clean, the crowd willing them on. And they've done it! The Green Ducks, they finally get a gold medal in the 11th hour. The final event of the Marble League they are hosting. The Green Ducks win at the pond. The Raspberry Racers get the silver. Our Marble League champion Pinkies get the bronze. I can feel the stadium absolutely shaking. The quacks are echoing off into the distance. And that duck looks about as happy as I have seen it this whole Marble League. Trust me, I've been keeping an eye on that duck. Awesome job for our hosts. Mallard, the captain, delivers them their long-awaited gold medal.
the Pinkies will capture the Marble League Championship. Two golds, three silvers, two bronze, and 13 points clear of the Shining Swarm. Team Galactic finished clear in third spot. And this is an absolute milestone for the Pinkies and a good farewell to Pinky Spud, who will be departing as their technical director. Thank you so much for watching the Marble League 2022 with the Pinkies as your winner. This has been a blast, and I cannot thank you all enough for taking part. Until next time, I'm Greg Woods. So long, everyone.